uh, I want to uh, introduce and bring on Daniel Adams. And let me just say this, that I'm going to ask him, he's going to speak more a bit about his ministry and uh, how God has moved in his life, how he got saved. And, uh, you know, you've seen a little bit that I've put on just to say he is uh, someone who God has turned from a MMA fighter to a demon slayer. Uh, somebody that is right now uh, or that God is using to pioneer deliverance in the United States. Uh, the grace of God is very strong upon his life. The anointing is very strong upon his life. There's a very strong revival anointing, revivalist, revivalistic uh, uh, grace upon his life. And wherever he goes, he is what we call a breaker anointing. He has the ability to break open. But more than that, there is a strong gift, even though deliverance is not a gift. We understand that that is for every believer, but there's still a special grace for deliverance on this. I want you to place a demand tonight. I want you to place a demand on the anointing, place a demand on the grace that is on the platform. And this is uh, uh, a ministry and he has a ministry called the Supernatural Life. And we're going to towards just the end of the broadcast put his website and everything on for you. And he's going to tell you more on where, on what God is doing and how God has taken this ministry around the nations uh, in a very powerful way. But, you know, I'm just, I was just, I was introduced to him about a, about a, I think about a month ago or so. And I was just, I was very touched by the way that God is using and his hand is upon him. And, you know, uh, I, I prophesied, I think it was Ian, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll say that right now, but I want us to just welcome uh, uh, Daniel, and Daniel, you're on right now. Uh, thank so you so good, much. So good to be here. <laughs> Daniel, I want to say that, first of all, that we honor the anointing on your life. We honor the gift on your life. We honor what God is doing, uh, the grace. You know, I know that the grace of God is not, or let me say it like this, the anointing doesn't fully operate uh, amongst believers unless there's honor. You know, God can still understand, uh, God has this understanding, and not that God doesn't have understanding for believers, but He's more gracious when it comes to non believers. Non believers doesn't have to honor a person. I mean, God, the anointing is there, it sets them free wherever they are. But when it comes to believers, you know, I believe in honor. So I want to say that, first of all, we honor you. I know that my followers or the followers of our ministry uh, honors and understands the concept of honor and not to move in a way of familiarity. Uh, and I want to say to you that your anointing is honored, your grace is honored on this broadcast. Tonight. I know God is going to do such amazing things uh, through your life, uh, you know, and through tonight. And um, I want to say thank you for making me part of uh, of the Forerunners Conference, you know, that is happening in the United States and is coming up. And I'm going to show, put on the fly a little bit later once uh, we kind of like in the middle and in peaking, and we'll tell people a bit more about that. But thank you so much for doing that. You know, I was very touched by that because I don't see that where I'm coming from where there's a lot of competition in our nation, unfortunately, in the body of Christ. And people are so scared of working together. And I'm so touched by looking at you, looking at possible. I see Pastor Vlad is on, on YouTube. Thank you so much, Pastor Vlad, for coming on and always supporting. Uh, 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 you know, he's in, this, in, the, in, the, in the chat section and people can give a shout out to him. Uh, but thank And I was so touched. I'm all, you know, by yourself, by Pastor Vlad. And... Um, and others, Isaiah and everybody working together, but also just embracing me on this side without, you know, um, it was just a spirit connection. It was just, uh, mm -hmm. it was just a spirit connection. And we know, we know how those things work and how those things flow. And, but I was, I was so touched because I don't experience that a lot. I experience um, competition where I go. Comp I experience, uh, uh, you know, you, I have a saying, we shouldn't be competing with one another. We should be completing one another. You know, one puts a thousand to flight, two put 10,000 so, to flight. So, but thank you for making me a part of that. It is a blessing. And I know tonight people going to um, be touched by your ministry. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do you have anything to say from your side? And I want to say we honor you, you know, and the anointing on your life. But I see there's so many people from, from your side, from the United States that's watching. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just super excited to be here for the opportunity. And like, you know, you're saying honor and grace here, man. I honor everything you're doing over there in South Africa. What's funny is the way I come across you was Vlad. I, I saw your name and, you know, we see a lot of names. We see a lot of ministers yes. and stuff like stuff like that. But when I saw your name, the spirit spoke to me and says, this is one of you're you're a part of what's happening right now in revival. What we're seeing in the United States, I've noticed anybody God has connected to me to, with, like you said, has been nothing but a totally Holy Spirit-led thing. 
you see so i'm very um how would you say i'm very precise on the relationships in this season so it may have seemed like i embraced you really fast but really the only way i embraced you was by the leading of the holy spirit and and then when i got closer to you i said oh i see what's going on here god has marked this god has marked this man of god to bring deliverance into south africa and i fully believe that i believe you are the marked one in this season and this isn't to lift you up or to say you're greater than anybody else it's just you're willing to you're willing to do what others in south africa that are stationed there are not willing to do and we've talked about how people chase people out of south africa and stuff and i have a lot of connections Actually, one of my big leaders in the ministry uh, is in South Africa right now. So mm-hmm. I got a little bit of an insight of what you were talking about before you even told me and then understanding Rodney's history from South yeah, Africa and definitely. stuff like that. So, you know, I knew when I, I knew I knew when I met you that you had that grace on your life. You know, they chase, you know, th- this is the reality is that they chase uh, prophets out of the nation. So, you know, you look at Kim Clement, gone. You look at other prophets that I can mention by name, which I'm not going to mention for the sake of just, uh, I know, <laughs> again, I don't want to mention, I don't want to, you know, you get into such controversy, like I said, there's such a thing, and I don't want to mention them by name, but they've been chased out of the country. And uh, um, I'm not the only prophet here. God is 7,000 that has not bowed uh, his knee, their knee to bow. We understand that. Um, you know, I'll never say I'm the only prophet. I, I have another prophet friend here in the United States that's grace is like, I would say a hundred times stronger than mine, you know, and God is using a mightily, a friend of mine. And, but when it comes to, uh, and apart from me and him, uh, uh, and again, I'm saying this with such carefulness because I'm going to get backlash and people are going to say, ah, oh, but I'm also a prophet and blah, 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 blah. Listen, we're not I'm putting you down. I'm just saying of, of in my sphere of working in ministry in South Africa, which is kind of like the mainstream sphere, you know, uh, uh, I, you know, when it comes to those who have a big platform, uh, uh, you know, I can't find other prophets. That is a big platform God has given a big influence to. And I'm not saying, I'm not debating and saying they are no question a prophet. And I want to make that very clear. But the moment somebody rises, they want to pull them down in this nation and kick them out. You know, I was prophesying. It came, this, this came to me last night, Daniel. And, um, and this is not to blow my own horn or anything. Uh, uh, um, I, 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 I might have not said the wording. And I'll confess that, I'm, I, or the word Orlando, I'm not sure. We must just check that, David. But I prophesied in 2019, end of 2019, when I prophesied about COVID. So December 2019, I went on. T- so I was sent to Parliament uh, in South Africa to, to, our, uh, to our Parliament um, uh, on this side. And I warned them four months. I warned them 2019, October, I think it was, November that what is going to happen in March 2020. I said, this will happen. The church is going to shut down, blah, 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 blah. And I sat with them one-on-one. I'm not going to mention the names of the people because this this is quite a, you know, when it comes to running, of, this is one of the people running a certain political party uh, in the nation. Uh, but I sat with them one-on-one. I told them what's going to happen. And, um, and uh, then it happened. But then 2019, December, on our New Year's Eve, I prophesied. And I said that, you know, March, there's going to be a, sh- a type of shutdown. I said, the church is closing. The greatest persecution is coming to the church. And that would, us on on facebook on youtube i think on facebook it got over five hundred thousand views or something like that um so uh, and then i said that uh, there'll be such a great persecution uh, recession is coming and etc but then i said something something that that i remembered last night i said god is going to raise up evangelists young evangelists and i'm not saying you got raised up only now i'm not saying that at, or that at all you know but 29 i said i saw these young evangelists popping up in i said in south africa and then i said in florida and I don't know if I said Orlando, maybe I didn't, but in my spirit, I saw Orlando. And I said Orlando to many other uh, evangelists privately that I spoke to that, that year, because in my spirit, the whole time I saw for 2020, I saw death for the church. I saw bodies like dead bodies everywhere. And then I saw God raising up evangelists. I didn't see deliverance, so I didn't see deliverance, but I saw these young evangelists and I said, New York. And I said, Florida. And I said, I see New York, Florida, how these evangelists are going to be risen up there. And at that time, I didn't know you or anything. And, um, you know, I think you're close to Orlando or something like that. I'm not sure. And again, I'm not saying you because of the, it's you because of the prophetic word. It was just, that came to me. And uh, I was just touched by that because I just saw clearly as a prophet that God is going to resurrect evangelism and many tent meetings in the United States, you know. And, uh, 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 but that is what, what I saw. And uh, now, you know, two years later or one, and the, uh, 2020, I got into touch with, 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 with Pastor Vlad and um, 
Uh, and then I began to see what God is doing with, with, with young guys. There. I don't want to say young people, but young guys there. You know, us that are young in ministry. Not young in ministry, young in age. Um, but, uh, 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 and we are the most unlikely vessels that God would use. You know, if I say, uh, God choosing me or using me, oh my goodness. I mean, there's so many better people to choose than me. And uh, he destroyed my, no, no, God didn't destroy. God allowed my reputation to be destroyed in South Africa so that he can raise me up. And my reputation was destroyed. And, uh, you know, I remember when I wanted to defend myself, God said no. And he took me through that, you know, because the scripture says he made, uh, you know, he made himself of no reputation. And then God raised him up his name to be above every other name. And what people don't understand, before a rising up comes, there is of no reputation. He will make your name so, no, God will allow your reputation to be so destroyed so that when he begins to lift you, you will not take the glory for yourself. I see we have over a thousand, close to 1,800 people on right now, close to over 1,800, close to 2,000 wow. people on right now. That's awesome, guys. So listen, um, uh, so Daniel, like, I don't want to take your time, but listen, I'm so happy to, to have you on. When I said I want to take your time, I don't want to go off and ramble. I want us to really get to the point of things. I'm so excited for having you on. I'm excited to be with you guys. Um, I said to my wife, I'm so intimidating, intimidated because it's like, man, you know, yeah, I said to Isaiah, I said to Isaiah, I said, man, I'm intimidated. I said, yeah, I come from South Africa. I'm like the only person from South Africa, you know, uh, and it's like, you guys have been moving powerfully in the United States. And, uh, for me, it is just an honor. I said to Pastor Greg Locke, uh, earlier I messaged, you know, he messaged me about you and I, I said to man, I'm just, you know, uh, I, me, I'm seeing it like coming and just receiving from you guys. Uh, so and excited to take it back to, to this side. But tell me a little bit of what God is doing before we get into your testimony of what God is doing right now with you guys in the States. Have you seen a resurgence of deliverance or a, uh, you know, just a sudden rise? And secondly, why do you think that is happening? Yeah, of course. I mean, you can see it. I mean, on YouTube and, and just in many other ministries lives here, ministers lives here in um, America. And even it's starting to be, like you said, across the world, we are seeing an incredible resurgence of deliverance. And it happened. What's really funny is it opened up right when COVID hit. It opened up right when that yes. hit. So I, I, there's a spiritual significance behind that, too, I believe. I mean, everybody's scared of fear and death and looking for hope. You know, it, it's sad that tragedies has to happen or plagues and things have to happen to get people's eyes back on Jesus. And I think another thing is there was people that were willing to continue on with ministry. When many ministers were shutting the doors, when many people were partnering with fear, a person like me, I was still out in the open on the beaches, in the parks, outside of hotels. Oh. I was holding mass revival meetings. And that's what really, I think people said, man, look at this guy. He's he's going from Florida to California. He's Come he's uh, completely going against the rules of what the government was saying. Yes, And uh, they just broke out. I've been in deliverance for a while, but I believe that we are seeing a resurgence right now. And it's funny is if you know this, you, you know this, of course, and many people watching is when deliverance happened in the church, they would hide the deliverance in another room. So, and, and there is a time, there's a time for that. Okay. So if it's a large deliverance, it's taken a long time. There's a time you, okay, this person has lots of demons. We got to get the service back in order. We're going to take them over here. But the old thing is pastors being scared that the families were going to be intimidated. People were going to leave the church because they they have to they have to introduce deliverance on their terms not on god's terms so i think what happened is because god, i think god actually probably in his own merciful way got fed up and he said i'm going to cause a such a resurgence of deliverance that nobody Come nobody on. no pastor no man it's going to break out in churches nobody's going to be able to contain it it's going to be in such a force that you are we are going to have only two choices either to deny deliverance completely which is really to deny the move of the holy spirit yes or to really embrace deliverance and just jump on the new move of god i've learned that when moves of god have happened people are so against it in the beginning they persecute Come the pioneers on. they throw them out of the church yes but it get but then so what is it that for a season they will tolerate you well they'll resist yes. you then they'll yes. to, then they'll tolerate, tolerate you, you and then eventually <laughs> they celebrate you you know and what they, i'm saying before they celebrate you they secretly come to you for help and, uh, exactly. Then they, then they, then they celebrate you. <laughs> you know, I've yeah. had that as a prophet. Uh, I've had that as a prophet. Listen, what you're saying about about um yeah, about people hiding deliverance. I was I was uh, I was just thinking of this. Now I was laughing. Listen, just guys, just before I go on, I want to ask those on YouTube right now. Just 
like the broadcast and subscribe to our channel. We're busy building up our channel. And South Africa is very difficult. And I want to ask our South African friends, if you are not subscribed, subscribe. You, you, you are sinning if you're not subscribed. Okay, and if you're following <laughs> the ministry. Uh, uh, if you follow my ministry and you're not subscribed, you are sinning. And, um, and uh, there will be deliverance tonight. Uh, but um, uh, just subscribe, guys. Give it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, but when you were saying about the um, hiding deliverance ministry, when I was, before I replanted the church, that was replanted church in 2016. Uh, before that, I was itinerant revivalist, uh, like you, uh, a, a similar type of ministry going, doing conferences Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, next week again, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, you'll go from church to church and go and revive them. And, and uh, you go to every different type of church. And we will do... We will do, I'll do, I mean, not do it deliverance specifically. I'm just praying, you just preaching and there's manifestations, obviously. Praying for people, there's manifestations. People are getting set free, uh, throwing up in front by the altar. And, you know, I've had so many churches coming to me and and uh, the, the, the pastors would come to me after the service and begin to rebuke me or call me aside. And I was like, serious. And I'm thinking, you know, now that I'm like a pastor, I'm thinking these guys are in so much politics and church politics and green room politics. And I just keep myself out of the nonsense, um, you know, because I was itinerant. I was a revivalist before. So, I don't, you know, a lot of, and, and this is for our minister friends on here. Guys, I want to ask you this thing. Uh, Tag your favorite minister. No, no. Yeah, tag your favorite minister and tag if you if you're you like your your spiritual father, or your pastor, or so, pastor, or so your local church minister, and this is this is for them to be helped. You know, we have relationships with many ministers, and I know how many ministers secretly need deliverance. Many of them are ashamed. Many of them are embarrassed. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Demons don't only come in because of open doors. Demons come in because of opportunity, you know, so not even opportunity. Demons can come in without a door. The Bible says that some crept in, you know, into the sheepfold and didn't come in by the door, came in through another way. Mm -hmm. So, so there, and I'm just using that in reference to deliverance. I know it's a bit of asegesis right now, but it's, it's okay. Um, uh, I'm just using it at a revelatory type of preaching. So it's not usually someone's fault if they have a demon there can be a generational curse there and then people are so embarrassed for manifesting in front of somebody or and ministers are so embarrassed so they try to you know they they don't want to go forward and they sit with this problem and then what happens you have the famous and we can mention this name rabbi zacharias you have the famous brian houston you have the, all these things happening and it's a tragedy it's nothing to rejoice in it is a tragedy. When those things come out, it is a tragedy. It is a hit and a blow to the body of Christ. It is like, like, like David was singing about Saul when Saul was falling. He said, oh, how the mighty have fallen. You know, and uh, uh, we must never rejoice in the falling of somebody, but there's always a reason behind that. Something that hasn't been dealt with. And I'm somebody that's just like, listen, I don't have a reputation. You know, uh, if I, I do this all the time. I go to Pastor Vlad. I, I phoned him. I think it was this year, beginning of this year. I think so. I was on a phone call with him. I said, listen, I want you just to scan me, pray for me on a video call. Uh, just pray for me. You know, I, I, I've, maybe there's this generational curse on me. This is the way I'm feeling right now. This is what, you know, uh, uh, what I'm thinking. And, and that's not even confession. You know, then I go to my own team or my own pastors, that's that my, which is also like a team of elders and, and the young guys that's been with me right from the beginning, many years, that's right now pastoring our churches and uh, together with me. And I'll tell them, listen, I feel this thing or I, I feel I overstepped the line here. I need prayer. I need, and I think that should be normal. And that taboo should be broken in the church where, uh, uh, that's why I ask you, tag your favorite minister or your pastor, because they might come up, they're not going to comment, but they're going to listen, okay? And, uh, and I want freedom to be for them, and I want them to understand that it's nothing to be ashamed about. And uh, Daniel, I was, um, I was uh, so, so these guys would come to me after the service and begin to rebuke me, call me aside for a serious meeting and say, listen here, you know, there's no such thing as casting demons out in the church. And, you know, those who were not against deliverance uh, were against it in their church service. So it says no glory to God. I'm like, I didn't do anything. I was preaching the word and the demon was manifesting. 
uh, it's not like I was doing deliverance on the going and provoking it. I mean, in those days, you don't even go, you're just preaching the word and demons would manifest. And then you, uh, you know, then you obviously you deal with it. But we had such wild services. The one night, I mean, I had, uh, I had five Satanists. So that I was preaching in this church and the power went off in the church. Uh, it was pitch black. Uh, and all the Christians were singing these faith songs and so on. Uh, and then the power goes, and, and bef- while they were doing that, I was preaching, I told them before the power went off, uh, electricity went off, I told them, listen, you know, there are Satanists in this building that's here to kill me tonight. Um, and the Christians were still fine. They were full of faith. And then the sudden the electricity went off and it went pitch black. And those Christians, the whole church froze. The band, I turned to the band. I said, listen, begin to worship right now. Sing. And they couldn't. They grabbed their throats like this. They said they can't. Their voice can't come out. I'm like, oh, you guys have any spiritual stamina yet? And, and uh, you know, I took the mic. Oh, there was no mic. I just raised my hands. I began to sing, sing and worship. I exalt thee. And then in the middle of that power being off, the electricity being off, I said, I said let, um, uh, let and, and my team was with me. I said, listen, those who are here to kill me, I said, come to the front now. And five ran forward with knives, some with knives this big, to come and stab me at the, at the pulpit. One was sitting right next to my wife, stood up, pulled out the knife right next to my wife, which my wife was at the back at that moment. She was busy something and uh, it was like a soldier trying to walk forward this, this young girl and as they ran forward i remember like this little bit of fear came on me i mean that's normal. like i didn't expect this yeah. and then i remember jumping down from the pulpit to the bottom and they froze in front all these guys froze in front and we began to lay hands on them and i mean it was just chaos from there when i say chaos like the one ran out into the highway one of my guys went they on here right now they with my pastors they went and dragged them in they have a camera i mean we have all this on camera footage so it's just wild services in those days and doing deliverance and two of those satanists got saved gave their hearts to the lord and uh you know but uh, oh did i get did i get flack then the offering wasn't good that night and the pastor said to me you know no the offering is bad because you know you're just bringing all these satanists to my church i'm like listen these guys were in your church and uh you know, uh, now you're accusing me for not taking up a big offering, but you know, that's just what we've experienced by what you're saying with people not embracing deliverance and the church. And they're trying to say you can't cast out demons in the church, you have a special room, for example, like you say, you know, and uh, we just experienced these radical deliverances. So, say that again. Oh. I say, we just experienced these the radical deliverances, you know, on yeah. this side unknowingly. And then the Spirit of God began to move in a way of where, uh, uh, I mean, that was always in my ministry. And uh, just before we get to your testimony, I wanted to say this, that then when, when I planted the church, uh, one of the things that made our church grow the fastest was implementing deliverance into our discipleship. So we've always had deliverance in that regard. But the last four months, after I see what has been happening with you guys in the United States, the last four months, there's begun a overspilling into South Africa of this deliverance. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm not speaking of the fake deliverance that's always been here, you know. Listen, guys, I know there's some things that's been, uh, it's like people not really getting really delivered. That's full on here in South Africa. I'm not speaking of that. I'm speaking of people getting radically delivered, completely set free of their problem that it is and the root problem and the source that it is. Uh, So, you know, we began to see a resurgence of that the last four months. And, um, uh, really radical. I mean, I would just be preaching and then I'd preach on the blood and then there's manifestations all over, you know, at the service. And it just began to happen and now it's happening with one of our churches in Cape Town. And I'm embracing it. I'm really embracing it because, uh, you know, I just want to learn. I, I know a lot, but there's a lot I don't know. And that's what I want to learn from from you also. And, you know, just one thing I want to share with you. I had, a, I had a thing, I don't want to say the Lord told me, but I was in prayer and something came to my heart. Uh, it was about a month ago. And the Lord said to me that, uh, uh, I don't want to say the Lord said to me because it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but I felt this thing coming to my heart. It's not an open vision. It was not a, it was not a visitation. It was nothing like that. It was not a prophetic word. It was just a thing coming to me that I felt that I remembered a few years ago. And I remembered a few years ago, I had this feeling that when certain generals are going to go, that there'll be a release of a mantle and, uh, you know, and I saw this corporate thing coming upon the body of Christ of deliverance when mm. TB Joshua went, you yeah. know, and uh, he was a general in the pioneering of deliverance, whether some on your disagree or agree, we're not into, into that right now. He was a general in pioneering the deliverance in this area. And we see that when he went, there was a release, a corporate release, where Big it's time. not God using just isolated individuals, but just all over 
are you guys, and I'm, I'm sure I've seen you guys activating people, importing to people, especially with your forerunners. Yeah, we're, we're seeing mass impartation right now. Every forerunner in the deliver, in, in, in the ministry does deliverance. Every last one of them. We're almost three, I think we're 3,000 strong across the globe. And we hear so many testimonies from them of full gospel stuff. I mean, it isn't only deliverance. I mean, it's the literal full gospel. The basics of the gospel are, are happening in every person's life. Every person's life. Come on. Uh, you know, and we're going to speak about your forerunner ministry um, uh, just after, you know, towards, towards the end of this so that people can be aware of it. But tell me something, Daniel. You know, I never heard your testimony um it fully and i think if we spoke uh, my mind i just don't remember things at the, you know this moment like fully sure. i forget things sometimes uh, i don't know if it is prophetic or not but um you know we, we, how, what is your testimony how did god save you what is the peak point for you in your testimony because i know there's a lot of people that have come on for for that tonight and i want you guys sure. while daniel is talking to ask somebody that needs to hear this you know all, all i know is that you were an ex mma fighter that is that is that is all i know <laughs> you know sure yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to condense it because, as you know, the testimony is consistently growing. So I'm going to try to yes. condense it as the best way possible just to get to the meat of stuff. You can hear my full testimony on my uh, YouTube page also for anybody watching that wants to hear it in depth. You can do it on there. But in December night, you know, I grew up in Well, actually, I, I grew up in a broken family. I come from a broken home. So, as you know, with brokenness, divorce, arguing, seeing all that stuff growing up, you see, you know, kids end up like I was. I ended up in addiction to drugs. I was chasing after women. I had a child early in life at 19. I just, I did everything as a child wrong, stole my dad's vehicles to go get drugs. I mean, I, it's just so much. I fought most of my life. I would fight to prove something because I was so rejected in my heart. And uh, I just felt like I had to prove who I was. You know, most of my life, I was always trying to prove, prove, prove and get the favor of man. And if I didn't get the favor of man in my youth, I would fight to show people, Hey, you're going to respect me. You're going to listen to me. You're going to say, and you're not going to pick on me because in school I was also picked on in middle school. So that brought rejection too. So oh I took God. on this, I took, yeah, I took on this fighter's persona most of my life. You know, we'd, we'd have backyard fights with my friends and everything. It was just, it was just, that was my life. So I was known as a fighting man growing up. Um, I was also known as the nice guy. I wasn't too bad, but I was bad mm -hmm. when I needed to be, I was bad when I needed to be, but I was finding my, my desire in the wrong places. So if I backtrack a little, December 1999, I remember my dad invited a Baptist minister from the church. He actually went through when he was little to where we were. And we weren't like everyday Christians. We would go every holiday. You know, we would go Christmas, Easter, and uh, what's the other one? Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. those times. So we would we would go to church then. So he invites this Baptist minister. And my dad says, hey, we're, I'm inviting this Baptist minister in so he can pray for you guys to be saved. And I was like, be saved. I, and I knew God because I would pray to God, believe it or not, even without having salvation or anything. I would just talk to God all my life. Even when I was a little child, I said to God, Lord, make me a pastor one day, not even knowing what I was saying. All I knew is that this was in my heart to 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 serve the Lord. I just didn't know how. So this Baptist minister comes in and he says a prayer with me and my sister, and I end up getting baptized in the church. So at that time, I had just put that seed of salvation in my heart. I said, Jesus, come into my heart you know, uh, save me. I repented of sin the best way I knew how, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I was, I was like, okay, God's going to save me. So I said that prayer and I lived life like hell after that, had a child at 19, um, ended up having to find a job straight out of high school. I had to become a man because my dad said, I'm not going to raise your child. You're going to raise your child because you had the child, you know? So I ended up getting a job uh, right out of high school. I mean, the day I graduated high school, I was in an apartment married with a child. So I, okay. I've been res that straight responsibility. I'm a child raising a child straight out of high school. So anyway, um, you know, grew, grew up in the broken home, going to do the job now. And I end up with a broken home because the one, the, the ch my child's mother actually left me, walked out. So I just, it was destruction upon destruction upon destruction. Most of my life, I was just seeing things taken from me, sabotage, self-sabotage, you name it, in the midst of me trying to save things, I was losing things. So I had a lot of pent up things I didn't know how to get rid of. I didn't know how to communicate. I didn't know how to have relationship and all these things. But I do remember when I said that prayer in 1999, God would always send people to talk to me about Jesus. All through my rebellion, all through my mess, even after I had my child, got out of school and uh, got the apartment and started working jobs. I was actually the youngest correctional officer at 19 years old in the state of Virginia. I got a job wow. as a correctional officer 
in the prison. And it's funny because when I got into the prison, the inmates started telling me about Jesus Christ. So the prisoners were the ones who started to talk to me about Jesus Christ. <laughs> I had a weird, I had a weird way of finding inmates who love Jesus. And I just wanted to be around those inmates and hear about the gospel. So prisoners who were really more free than I was, was telling me about Jesus Christ. And uh, in that time, even as a correctional officer, I ended up going into cage fighting because I was an athlete through school most of my life. Played football, American football, and stuff <laughs> like that. And I, and I, I, I didn't want to just work the normal job. In my heart, I was like, there's so much more to life. I know that I have so much potential. Why am I sitting here wasting away? I was looking at the people in the corrections. They were miserable. They were having heart attacks, health issues, because the life expectancy of a correctional officer is into the late 50s. And I was like, I don't want to die into my late 50s. I don't want to die a miserable man, you know? So I end up becoming a cage fighter. I meet my ex in, in, in Orlando, Florida. I end up following her, and not in Orlando, in, in Virginia, and I end up finding out she's from Orlando, Florida, and, and these ring these bells start going off on my head. I can pursue being a famous cage fighter. Like I saw, I saw an avenue of fame, and I was like, I can do this. So I come to Florida. I just quit all my job. I was a sheriff's deputy in Virginia. I quit the job, went straight to Florida, not just went there. I don't even know what I was doing. I'm from a small farm town of about 1,000 people, I get down to Florida and I'm scared to death. And you know, Florida is Orlando, Florida is not New York City. Okay, it's it's not. Mm, it's it's yes. a very it's a very open city. Okay, but I'm down there. I've never I seen think, the city. I think people I think people need to know just for South Africa that hasn't because there's people in South Africa that hasn't been to the United States don't understand the different states in the United States. It's almost like a different country. Yeah. You know? So you, if you if you're in Georgia, it's totally different to Florida. If you're in Florida, it's totally different to 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 New York. New York totally different to California. It's like a different accent, different state, sure. and South Africans can't really uh, uh, comprehend that. But anyway, yes, yes, yeah, carry carry on. Yeah, and and just to keep it short, I moved down to Florida pursuing cage fighting. Now I didn't tell you this. I had always had demonic attacks in my life, and I didn't realize it. So from the time I was a child up to this point I'm talking about, there was always like nighttime attacks. I'd get held down in my bed. I would hear walking on the room. I would see orbs flying around. My mom would see would see apparitions walking through a room. Ghosts would appear. And she'd be like, I saw a ghost last night in the form of an Indian. I mean, we would see all <laughs> – there was always the paranormal – around yes. lights turning on for no reason so yes uh it looked like pictures had eyes in them you know that kind of stuff so i yes. would see that my whole life so i had intense fear so imagine this intense fear and i'll go into this city i have like the social anxiety was incredible I, i'm a cage fighter now but i'm in the big big city now in orlando right i walk out i didn't even want to come out of my apartment i would not walk out of the apartment because i was so scared yet i could fight in the physical I was something was making me scared to step out into something bigger than me. You see what I'm saying? Yes. I, I had the revelation that my it, I'm not in the small town no more. I'm not the only voice. I'm not the only person. So it took a lot of adjusting when I came down into this. But what happened to me when I came to Orlando, I believe God manufactured this because Orlando, this city, Orlando, that I'm still in right now. Actually, I'll be moving from here not too long from now. Praise the Lord. But <laughs> Orlando was a place that crushed me. So I came to Orlando to to be crushed is what I say. But I came here and God also found me in Orlando. The supernatural became real to me in Orlando. People of of supernatural understanding started to find me. Even though they weren't the best people, God would use all these people to come drop nuggets in my heart. So one night I was I, I had yeah, and even in cage fighting, I had people come. Uh, actually, it was Casey Anthony's ex, people that know who she is. She was a big story about her. He actually found me in the cage fighting gym when I was cage fighting and taught me about speaking in tongues. Oh, so true. I was – God just taught me stuff along the way that I had no no idea what it was about. And what really launched me in my testimony into deliverance is I quit cage fighting because I had a very strong encounter with the Lord in my bedroom. I had two, three, no, three pro contracts fall. So I was about to go pro. I had yeah. been, I'd been, I'd been training as an amateur, had enough fights under my belt. I was going pro. I was going to go for this. And God stopped me right before my first pro fight. I got sick. I had a, a, a congestion in my chest. And if you know anything about fighting, you're not going to go into cage with a killer at 10% or 20% because they're going to, they're <laughs> going to knock you out. And you got to have wind in your lungs or you're going for a one-hit KO. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So I end up, I end up in my bed, the, the Bible that I got baptized with, and they gave me in 1999 was beside my bed. I picked that Bible up. Revelation came off of those words. I went to the computer, looked on YouTube, worship songs for some odd reason. And the song, can you take the nails from this man? Can you take the nails from it? Can you take the place of this man? Can you take the nails from his hand from Jeremy Camp was playing. And I'm telling you the tangible presence of God came into my apartment in such an incredible way. It instantly marked me and I was weeping and crying and God was real to me for the first time ever I had experienced his presence. And at that moment, my heart was chipped and uh, all the anger that was in my heart that forced me to hit people um, was gone. So I went back into the gym. I could not, I was pulling my punches. I couldn't hit people the same way. My heart wasn't in it. And I said, I got to quit. So Casey Anthony's ex actually got me a job in, uh, as a personal trainer. And it's when I left cage fighting my, now listen, this is a huge revelation. When I left what I was pursuing for my own flesh, because I told God, I'm giving you this. I don't know what to do after this. I'll serve you for whatever, but here's cage fighting. You just got to show me the way now because I don't know what to do. It was right after that, I went into the gym, start, became a personal trainer and a deliverance minister out of nowhere from this girl who had been watching me and listening to me. She told this deliverance minister to come into the gym and he brings me a book pile. It's a big book pile of like rejection and bitterness and unloving and and just how to deal with unforgiveness and how diseases cause sicknesses in the yes. body. He says, he comes to me, looks at me and says, here's your stuff. Just like that. Nice to meet you. Hope to see you again. And I'm like, what the world is this guy doing? I'm like, I don't know <laughs> you, you know? And, and the guy that was teaching me about tongues and got me in the gym, his dad was a deliverance minister, right? Come so on. deliverance ministry was chasing me down and I didn't even realize it. So I get these books. I listen, I go and sit in this man's deliverance ministry and I remember one day I'm with this deliverance ministry. He says, uh, he rebaptized me. And then I'm sitting with him again. And he says, I want to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. And I said, receive, receive the Holy Spirit. I was scared of speaking in tongues. I, I hear them people. I remember I went in the church and I ran out. And it was I know why I ran out now. I had some demons in me. But I didn't, <laughs> under, I didn't, I didn't understand it. So he says, I'm going to pray for you. And you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, all right. And I'm believing it's going to be electricity, fireworks. I'm talking, I think I'm going to fly out the roof, you know, because I've seen people get filled with the Holy Spirit yeah. and have a massive experience. He lays hands on me and he gently says, receive the Holy Spirit, takes his hands off. And he says, that's good enough. And I said, that's good enough. I said, this is crazy. <laughs> I said, you're over here laying hands on me. Nothing's happened to me. I said, ah, this guy must be phony, you know, but I was over at his house learning from him. So it was like, I think, I think prophet, it was probably two weeks after that or something. I'm in my shower. I'm, I'm serious in my shower. And I remember having the thought he laid hands on me. The Bible says, lay hands and you receive the Holy spirit. And I'm telling you about at that same moment, the electric power of God started to tingle mm -hmm. down my body and, and tongues burst forth Come out on. of nowhere in my shower, just me, God in the shower. You see what I'm saying? The water felt like it got hot and I was just speaking in tongues. And it was after that moment, that moment right there, I was anointed for deliverance in 2013. And then the Lord brought me under an apostolic ministry, revival ministry, where I was taught, where I was broken. He sent me there to be, build my character because I had no character. And also where I can make every mistake in the world and mess up, if you know what I'm saying. Yes. yes so yes. I and, and, and also here in Orlando, there's actually, actually I see some people in the chat that know me from my past that know me in Orlando. People <laughs> wow. know me also as the guy, people also know me as a guy in Orlando that messed up in ministry also. So I've also, <laughs> I've also, yeah, man, I fall. You talk about no reputation, man. I've had ministers come against me for deliverance. I remember when I started recording that people told me, stop pastors were saying, stop recording. You're using people. And I'm like, no, God is doing this now. This is what's coming. He's told me to do it. And nobody was recording at the time, right? Uh, deliverance yes. on, on the film. But God had met me in a dream and he told me to do it. So I told the man of God over my life, I said, look, I honor you. I respect you. I love you. And you may be right because I may be using people. But at the same time, guess what? God has spoken. And I'm sorry, man of God, but his voice is louder than yours. If there's no fruit in this, he's going to stop it and he, it'll fall all the way apart. And I told him that respectfully and in love and he didn't like it. He didn't like it at all. I had to listen, yes. you know. Yes. So so anyway, I, I, I end up you know, getting broken here in Orlando and everything and becoming, like you said, my reputation was nothing. I came to nothing. I even got to a point profit in ministry where I said, after being broken into a million pieces by, by the hand of God and by my own pride <laughs> and, and losing, losing everything, losing my whole family and everything. I, I, I was sitting there and I, I had a thought. I said, 
I'm just going to play video games and eat ice cream. That literally, <laughs> that literally, that literally came. I was so mm-hmm. over ministry. I was so over everything. I had gotten done with it. I said, I want nothing else to do with ministry. I want nothing else to do with these pastors and these preachers. Everybody's fake. These Christians stab me in my back. I can't stand it. I'm the one with the problem though, but that's my mindset. Yeah. Right. And then, and then, uh, I remember it's not long after that. I even came into more of a broken state where I started. Now this was a huge revelation. Uh, the man of God over me was always saying godly sorrow. And I didn't even understand godly sorrow or true repentance or holiness and stuff like that. Yes. I remember I sat on the couch and I felt like the anointing was off of me. I, I mean, I felt he had uh, that his presence was far from me. I mean, he yes. really was. And I experienced for my first time on the couch, godly sorrow. The Lord said, you got this one sin on you, one sin, and you can't handle it. And you're about to give up and leave ministry and walk away because you've made one sin. Yet, yet, yet I took the sins of the world on my shoulders and you're sitting here complaining. And I remember I broke again. I remember I felt conviction, my pride, everything just in one moment broke and I screamed out for mercy and told God to have mercy upon me, upon my life and uh, for my for my, you know, transgressions and everything. Forgive me and all that. And um, I remember my wife now she was sitting she was sitting there and she was just in awe of what God was doing. She got to sit there and watch the whole experience of God encountering me again and giving me another shot. He gave me another Come shot, on. even Come in on. all my mess, all my iniquity, all my failings. He said, Daniel, I haven't forgotten about you, but I had to prepare you before you could do what you're doing right now. So it was after that, the anointing. I remember, oh, I remember that precious moment when the anointing came up on me again. And it was amazing. I broke. I remembered it just like when I get chills now thinking about it. When I was on the computer, I remembered that moment. I was experiencing that again. And I told God, I said, let me make a deal with you. I'm going to make a deal with you right now. You give me another shot in this world. You let me have one more chance. And I will make sure every time I preach the gospel, you get glory in everything that I do. It's not mine. It's not me. Oh, yes. I will make sure any any person you put in front of me knows the name of Jesus Christ, not the name of Daniel Adams. Yes. May Jesus Christ be made famous in my life. And when I made that deal with him, I laid down in my bed at night and one of my videos, I'm the same night prophet, one of my videos catch the algorithm and I get shot out into YouTube and everything blows up. People are coming. I had a church at the time. People start massively coming into church. I go from 20 people a week to like over almost 100 to 200 people in the church every week in an instant. I mean, in an and, instant. And just for people to understand, and again, South Af- again in South Africa, because when it comes to church attendance, uh, people need to understand in the United States, it's not the same as South Africa. You know, South Africa, you have large churches. So, yeah. um, you know, when you speak in, 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 in the United States of numbers of 200, that's huge. That's huge. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 You, you know, For I mean, me, it was huge too in that season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so carry on, carry on. I don't want to break your flow there. No, I'm almost, I'm almost done. So like, oh, please. I went from 20 to 200 right after that moment in my whole life. Because of repentance, understanding repentance, understanding what it the the importance that we're going to you said you want to talk about holiness that it is attainable. It is something you can walk out. It's actually an enjoyable attribute of God to be holy as He is holy. It's enjoyable. Yes. Uh, when I started to really grasp all this, the sins, even the sins that plagued me, the immorality, the perversion. All of it was, it just disappeared in a moment. And I got delivered. My wife ended up delivering me from demons, actually. I remember I was <laughs> preaching at the pulpit after that. And I, I was preaching and actually I would have this intense cough come into my mouth. And it wasn't your normal cough. It was like an angry cough. And I remember I was preaching and I said, after this service, you're taking me to the car and you're delivering me. My wife lays hands on me in the car and I'm getting delivered from a full-blown spirit, from a, from a witchcraft spirit that was on me from all my mess. And I also got delivered in front of the congregation. I stood in front of the congregation and I repented in front of them of all, <laughs> all the past, all the lust. I mean, I had gotten so broken. I didn't care what people <laughs> thought about me. I put all my sins for everybody. See, the congregation was crying. I was crying. I was getting delivered in front of the congregation. And everybody was over there praying over me because Pastor Daniel's over there getting delivered in front of everybody, <laughs> you know. So I just, you know, I went through a really big refining season that broke me and and built me to who I am today by the glory of God. But, you know, man, it was just a moment. It was one moment that changed everything in my life. And deliverance has just been, it came natural to me. You know, the Lord, it's like he, that was the first thing, prophet, he put in my hands is a deliverance manual. God, the first thing God put in my hands was a deliverance manual. I have been under the teachings of 
uh, of so many, so many deliverance people, yes. so many apostolic I've served under, I helped build an apostolic ministry. I mean, I've, I've, I've done so much. I've been in the office of the evangelist for three years of my yes. life, you know? So I've just had to, I've went through so much in my early years cause I'm only 34 of life, but man, my testimony is still growing to this day. I, I've got so much, so much I can say about God, but that's the meat of who I am. You know, I, I've went through a lot of suffering for my own causes and trials and tribulations that all of us that want to be men and women of God have to go through. No, I tell people, every young minister, I say, you can't escape the process. I say, oh, everybody, you can't escape Come the on. process. Young, Come on. young ministers that are younger than us today, they believe they can escape the process. And I'm like, you can't. Character buildings for everybody. So when I see some of these young ministers, they're about to jump and do their ministries and they're actually jumping ahead of God. I'm like, you don't get escape the process. You don't. They're yes. like, you know, when I'm talking young, I mean, early 20s, mid 20s. I'm like, yes. no, you, you, I learned God would give me moments in my early ministry of where I'd see big crowds and then they decrease. Yeah. yeah, glimpse. He gives you a glimpse of what's to come. So I had a glimpse of it and then it disappeared for, for years, actually. Sure. For years, it was because it, it was. After, yeah, yes. I saw the glimpse. And then it it was like everything went dim. <laughs> and it, that was because God's like, this is a, this is how it's going to look. And you can't handle it right now, but I'm showing you because I'm a good God and I'm a good father and I want to show you what's to come. Now you're going to go through this refining process to handle it appropriately. When I put it on, when I put it on your life, the empower, it's called the empowering anointing for those who don't know. Acts 1, 8, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when the empowering anointing comes upon you, you'll become a bold witness. You know, when that anointing comes upon you, you'll be able to sustain it by my mercy, by and by the presence of God. You'll be able to sustain it through relationship. So that's, you know, we're all going to go through it. So young minister, if you're watching this right now, you're in your maybe mid to early 20s. The process is yours. So I'm still going through it myself, man. We can't get away from it. So embrace the process and stay humble. And you don't have to have a testimony like mine. You don't have to go through what I went through. Amen. So that's you know, a little bit profit that, of my that testimony. Is, that is exactly. Look, look, I feel, you know, I felt the anointing very strong when you were speaking about, um, about, uh, you know, when you, if I can say it, quotation marks, but fell or, you know, you messed up and you thought it was yeah. over. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of people, I think, in the chat room right now that, you know, some of them might be in ministry, some might not be in ministry, and they feel that they've messed up too much. But, uh, you know, there's something that you were speaking about process, you know, uh, 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 process, process, um, you know, the, you cannot get to what God has for you without paying the price. And a lot of people right now with, the, you know, with, with the social media culture and the, what do you call it? The instant gratification, you know, of just scrolling and TikTok uh, generation scrolling Instagram and it's, it's instant gratification and it works on your, on your, uh, on your uh, receptors in your, and, and dopamine and et cetera. And uh, that actually wants them not to go through the process that God has for them. And they don't want to pay the price. You know, I mean, I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm in ministry, you know, I'm now 38. I got saved when I was 19. And uh, if God showed me what I would go through, I would have never got said yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, getting saved in a drug den and uh, 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 my drug dealer laying hands or he's actually on here, uh, you know, uh, he's in the chat I saw. So, um, you know, he was in a drug den with me and he had reached, he got saved and then he came and uh, preached to me, you know, while I was using the one night and we were just getting out of it and, and he preached radical to me and laid hands on me. The power of God came on me and I woke up on the floor, uh, yeah, not woke up, I mean, I fell onto the floor and I, when I saw I was on the floor and there was electricity all over me and I've never experienced the power of God like that. I didn't know. We were in a very religious church. I didn't know that was even possible, but uh, he's in the, he's in the chat and, um, uh, 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 David Moss, I see that. And they actually did a documentary on us, TBN, you know, that, uh, or a docudrama and they, and we acted out my whole, uh, testimony, uh, on, on how it, how it happened. And that's still on YouTube. But, um, I had to go through, you know, when I got, when I got saved, I, this prophet came to that eventually became my uh, spiritual father uh, that introduced me into ministry and et cetera, basically took me off the streets and so on. But uh, he, he, I remember him coming into a church where I was, atten where I was attending uh, and there was, uh, it was a lot of people and he called me out and he prophesied over me and said, how I will travel the nations and et cetera as a prophet. And, da, da, da. and uh, you know, mm. I was like, uh, no, I know, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 people on your, 
I want to say this, uh, and this it's a nice broadcast, it's not about that, but a lot of people ask me you know, about the prophetic and so on, and you can go, I, I, I think I, I did it or discussed a bit of it on Isaiah's channel. Um, you know, you cannot, and I'm, and I'm going to clarify that because there's a lot of confusion, you do not become a prophet by somebody prophesying over you that you are a prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and same with the apost uh, uh, apostolic, same, I believe, with the other gifts, but the priority, uh, or, 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 or most commonly, I would say the prophet and the apostle, there has to be an encounter with God, a visitation, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and then there has to be a commissioning really after that for the recognition of the body of Christ. That is very important. But um, so, so before this person prophesied over me that I'm called to be as a prophet, I already had an encounter before that. I got encountered directly after my salvation at the age of 17. But I think it was at about 18 or so. He called me out and he prophesied. He said, I'm going to travel the nations and etc." Man, I thought the next day I was going to be Benny Hinn. You know, I yep. only had Benny Hinn's uh, uh, videos of those days. We had VHS tapes and, tapes and I had one of him where he waved his jacket and I'm, I, I calculated, I worked it, I tried it. I, you know, uh, over and over and over, uh, wherever, wherever I yeah. could do it, I tried to get anointing. <laughs> and I remember nothing worked in the beginning. You know, yeah, nothing bro. worked. I mean, you lay hands, no one is dropping. And uh, yep. uh, in the beginning, and God took you through this process that, um, that uh, you know, now it's easy. We know, we know how to flow in the anointing, mm -hmm. but he breaks you and you have to pay the price for the anointing when all my friends in the youth that i was in at that time were just uh, messing around i did my best to press into the presence of god did my best to uh to, I, I was just sitting under the anointing as much as i can i remember fasting I don't know how many 21 days a year, fasting 40 days on water, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's why I had my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, walking into my room. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, there's something called paying the price. You have to go mm -hmm. through the process. And this generation just want things quick. You know, they want where you are now instantly. And they think that they can have it now. And, uh, 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 you know, when, and, and I want Daniel's testimony to, to, to really touch it because I believe there's ministers that are watching. I believe there's young ministers or young people. When I say young people, I aged from 18, 20 to 35 to, you know, in our, uh, anything in that age group that you feel it is over or God cannot use you. Um, because maybe he visited you or you had an encounter many years ago and you messed up and you feel because of your sins or because of messing up that ministry is no longer there. Listen, the call of God does not depart from you. We yeah. think God, it doesn't. The Bible says his gifts and callings is mm -hmm. without repentance. You know, uh, he's waiting for us to come in line. He doesn't care yeah. about our reputation. He doesn't care about where we think what people think about us. He doesn't care where we have messed up, believe it or not, even though we're going to talk about holiness right now. But people are very sin conscious. And when they sin conscious, you, you can never flow in the anointing because you continually yeah. think you see when adam and eve fell the bible says they realized they were naked so they became but they were naked before that they became sin conscious and uh, uh, uh you know so and the scripture says this it says be holy for i am holy and we yep. think that be holy is a um is a uh 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 uh, uh is works or something that we have to do. When you look at the scripture, it is it is an empowerment scripture. So when mm -hmm. it says, be holy for I am holy, it is, I don't know how to explain it to people in a better way, but in the Greek, it is it is written in this way that it is when God says, be holy. Uh, uh, sorry, Peter. When Peter says, uh, be holy, he's obviously quoting the scripture there. Uh, I mean, him quoting it. Be holy for I am holy as I am holy. That word be is an empowerment statement. It is, mm. holiness is an identity. It is not an mm -hmm. action. It is an identity. It is a, uh, holiness is a, is a, um, is a, is a, it is like a citizenship. It is something you are. If I go to my daughter right now, and uh, well, now we can't use that analogy anymore because the uh, uh, the gender nouns and everything has messed that up. I think you did a wow. broadcast on that last week or something. You know, I, yep. I, I saw that, and uh, people can go watch that. But I mean, we can't even use that analogy. But if somebody has to come to my daughter and say she's a boy, I mean, let's take South Africa at least. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, this is going to be bad for me saying this, and I know maybe I'm going to be persecuted. You know, but my daughter <laughs> came down. My daughter is young. I've got one five and one seven. And my daughter, that's that's uh, five. I, I don't know if which one came to me, but they're like, they said, um, they said, uh, 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 was it me or somebody? It was some actor on on on. We were watching, we were watching um, 
uh, I was watching something, Bear Grylls with the, you know, National Geographic, a Bear Grylls episode. And, and I think they had Channing Tatum on there. I was just uh, watching this thing. It was just, we were in Cape Town and, and, uh, and, and my daughter said, she says, oh, he's a, he's a handsome guy. And I'm like, okay, I, you know, I want to like rebuke her now for this, but she's seven years old. Or, and I'm thinking, at least she's not saying it to a woman, you know, and I'm thinking how the, how the, how the standards have shifted. Like, you know, these days yeah. I'm just glad if, you're, if your daughter is interested in men, it's bad, you know, but um, yeah. uh, 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 so, so, but if I have to go to my daughter and say she's a boy now, She'll be like, no, she's not a boy. She's a she's a girl. You know, if somebody has mm-hmm. to tell me I'm a girl, no, no, it because nobody has to tell me it's an identity, and that, that is where mm-hmm. holiness. So I wanted to ask you, what is what do you think is the difference? On or let me say this: How can people live a holy life, holiness? And what is the importance yeah. of holiness? And what is the difference between legalism and holiness? Yeah. Um- the goodness of God leads people to repentance. So I think when you understand his goodness, when you understand his nature, when you get to know him, when you want to be like him, not in a place, and it has to be led by love. I think a lot of people fell in holiness. They fell in it. They fell in obtaining holiness per se, um, because we can't do it in our own strength because they think they got to strive. And there is, there is some good aspects to striving, but they, you have to strive to be holy. And it's, that's where legalism comes in. I got to do this. I got to do that. And we know that the law is the revealer of sin. So when people get into these works mindsets and stuff like this, and they go, well, if I do enough of this, I'm going now God is going to say that I'm holy. But then that takes away grace. That takes away uh, mercy. That takes all these things away. So now you're under a legalistic holiness, I would call it. And, and you're actually sinning every other day, trying to be holy in your own strength. So like you said, when Peter says, be holy, it means receive the attributes receive of holiness. Receive the, what God has given you through his Holy Spirit. It says the son, in Romans 8, it says the sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit. When you're truly led by the Spirit of the Lord, holiness is actually, actually profit. I don't think every day when I wake up, I, I need to, to be, be holy. Oh, to be holy, yes. I, I, don't, I don't wake up saying, what sin am I going to do today? I just be holy. I just Come become on. I become because he has given me by divine impartation through the cross of Calvary. It has been, I have been imputed his righteousness. I have been imputed his holiness. I've been imputed purity. I've been imputed self-control. I've been imputed the characters of the Holy Spirit. And you have to get it. This has to be, now listen to me guys. This has to be caught revelation as you read his word and as you have communion communion is a huge huge way to obtain that a holiness attribute of jesus christ it's possible it's obtainable and and what i've learned as i say let's make holiness cool again like why it's so easy for everybody to be wicked and to do wrong things And that's because the devil has to deceive us to make these things right. You actually have to fall in love with what's right. Love. So the way the way you're holy, the way you have self-control, the way you have any attribute of God is you fall in love with God. And that love is going to lead you. So now holiness is just a byproduct of that love that you've received. Now you just live from that place because you're in love with the one who is holy. You're in love with the one who has made you pure. You're in love with righteousness because you're in love with righteousness. You're in love with you're in love with giving because you've been loved by the giver. You yes, understand what yes. was, uh, we're still trying to grasp how much he's gave. He's gave oh, so man. much, but you give because he gave like you're holy because man. he's holy. You're righteous because he's righteous. And I know that's hard. Some people that are living in carnality, your mind is like, what is this guy talking about? I know how it works, but it's a spiritual truth. It's a spiritual understanding. And the way you obtain it is through communion with God. You have to, you have to have relationship and not because works, but a man has a relationship with his wife and a wife has a relationship with his husband, not because they're told to, but because yes. they love one another and they do things for one another, not of an act of, I have to do this, but because you naturally love them, to. your ki- your your kids the same way. You're not, you're not going to go teach your kids bad things because you want to be bad. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you you yeah. don't, you don't, we always say we don't want our kids to do our mistakes. Well, think about God. God's the same way. So if we learn from our father, if we have relationship with him, 
and, and you allow him to guide you by your voice. You know, it says he'll lead you through the valley of shadow of death. He'll fear no over. He'll take you beside green pastures, beside still waters. All of this stuff is just ways that in the word that gives you metaphors of how to walk with the Lord and what he offers you and what he's going to do for you. So when you catch the truth of the word, holiness is an easy, easy attribute. And I know that's a mouthful prophet. There's so much we can say about this, but that when I, when I hear the words be holy, I don't hear, oh man, this sucks. Yes. I hear why I hear, I hear, wow, this holiness is going to produce his power in your life. Oh. Holiness is, holiness is going to produce right living. Holiness is going to actually bring you before yes. great men, men and women in this earth, yes. you know, because because you're going to shine the light of Christ through that holiness. So I, I hope that's the best example. I'm trying like you to, to give them at all. But, you know, <laughs> legal, le, yeah, legalism is to try in your own strength. So if you're trying to to, yeah. to trying to obtain holiness, stop trying and just give in to holiness, give in to what God has imp yes. imputed to you. And now he'll lead you by his spirit into holiness. You know, um, uh, uh, I, I was preaching a message and, and uh, how people really loved it, but I can see how people can maybe take it out of context. And I was saying, uh, you know, uh, whoever is born of God cannot sin. The scripture says it. Mm. Yet it's, you know, it contradicts itself. It will contradict in our fleshly way and in other places because we don't understand the interpretation of scripture. But it says whoever is born of God cannot sin. And what I mean by it, what it means by that is that you need to understand the empowerment that when you receive it, it no longer becomes work. You know, it's like grace, uh, grace is not an excuse. Grace empowers. And people misunderstood the concept of grace, uh, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so when we say that grace, uh, we, we speak, I speak about grace or we speak about sin, and I say people shouldn't be sin conscious. That is because exactly like you just said, we don't wake up. You don't wake up and think, okay, I, I have to be holy. It's something you are. It's in your. It's imprinted in your identity, and it starts yep. in the secret place. You know, it's a. Uh, uh, you know, Paul says this in in in. Oh, I love this in one Corinthians, ten verse twenty three. He says, "All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful, beneficial." He says, "For all things are lawful for me, but not all things edify." Um, and he says the same similar um, in one Corinthians six verse twelve. He says, "Listen, I can do all things are lawful." But for me, there are certain things that is illegal. You were speaking earlier when about your fighting. Now mm -hmm. it's not bad the, when I, okay for you know we can get into some scriptures so on. But somebody else can be fighting and can be a Christian. There's many fighters. You know uh, MMA fighters that are born mm -hmm. again that are saved. But mm -hmm. God isn't speaking that to them. But if you now mm -hmm. impute that upon somebody, put that upon somebody, and say nobody's allowed to be fighting, now it becomes legalism. But right. uh, but to you, it became illegal because God demanded more of you because of the call yes. of God upon your life. And that grace empowers you to do it. So there are certain things for me that's just unlawful for me to do that I knew that right. the Lord said to me, you know, I don't touch alcohol. For me, I just don't mm -hmm. touch alcohol. I feel there's too many ministers that mess up with that. I, mm -hmm. Any minister that I've seen for, I just dealt with... Um, and, and work, I was working with somebody's family uh, of a minister, a very uh, a big minister that fell just now, no, no, that, that passed away in the United States just now. And he fell and passed away. But, um, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's when I look at every single uh, minister, well, most ministers that fall, there's alcohol involved. And I just said, you know, my wife and I just made a decision. We just said, we don't want to touch anything that can affect what God has. Why do I have to fight mm -hmm. to a drink? I remember sitting with some ministers and very well-known ministers, even in this South, in the nation of South Africa, that is drinking. And, and they would so fight with you to say, but this mm -hmm. is the scripture allows, I can drink. So you want to fight so much so that you can have one glass of wine a night. I mean, what stupidity. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. If, if I'm, if, you know, if the anointing really comes upon you, you would want to do everything to see how yeah. close you can be to God, not to see yes. what I can get away with and what God allows. No, no, no. You know, if, if this is going to offend them, I don't want to have to do anything with it. But it is something that comes to you personally that is like, this is lawful for others, but not for you. You know, uh, so the Lord yep. said to me, for example, certain, you know, me, I can't watch certain movies or I can't do yep. this or I can't, yep. you know, when it comes to the call of my life, I cannot do it. The Lord said to me, you will never allow me to do business. You know, he mm. said it to me straight. He says, and whenever, and I have a lot of business opportunities coming up and people want to bring things and you get a bit interested. You're like, and we're very blessed in, in ministry, but you just get pulled a little bit to that and you can feel God is reminding me, it's like, hey, you know, I, I have not called you to do this. You are not, other ministers can do business. And then I'm like, you know, there's other preachers. They can do business and ministry. But for me, the Lord said, this is not lawful for me. 
That's that's right. holiness. It's something that is personal, but I can only find out what is not lawful for me when I have that personal relationship in the secret place. I'm sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I'm sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I spend time in the secret place. I fall in love with Jesus. And I'm like, and I'm, uh, you know, that is where he can minister to me and say, I don't want you to be in this. I don't want you to, doesn't matter if others are doing it because of the grace on your life, because, you know, because if you look yes. in the Old Testament, uh, so, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament, you see Nazarites. Uh, uh, Jesus was also a Nazarite. We see um, Samson being a Nazarite. We, you know, and they had certain restrictions that others were allowed to do. I mean, a Nazarite was not allowed to touch alcohol, yet God speaks to the nation of Israel and said, I want you to go drink strong drink there you know, or at that time of the year, go drink strong drink coming from God. Uh, yet the Nazarites were not allowed. So there's a, there's a certain remnant, if I can say it like that, or a certain yes. chosen group of people. And, and this is for people in the chat to understand this, that holiness is something that is personal. You know, uh, we cannot tell you what you can and cannot do. You, know, mm -hmm. you need to hear that from the Holy Spirit. Now, they are clear, normal, mm -hmm. basic stuff. Don't watch porn. Sure. You don't have to hear God on watching pornography or not. But I think holiness goes beyond just your basic sense. It goes yeah. to a place where you are obedient to God's personal call on your life, you know, um, uh, 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 which is not putting that demands on others, but is putting it on you, you know. And yeah. when you're obedient to that, then the anointing comes and it rests on you. Uh, yes. You know, Jesus said these words. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because mm. he has anointed me to preach the gospel. And we see how he goes through, goes set the captives free and he goes through the list. But he says, that is what the Lord anointed me to do. And once I stay in that, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So the Spirit of the Lord Hallelujah. will be upon you once you are obedient. And obedience brings holiness. You know, uh, yes. uh, uh, that's just what I'm thinking. But, you know, for me, my favorite subject to preach on is always the secret place. My ministry has developed out of the secret place. You know, um, uh, I think from all the rejection, even from when I was young, uh, uh, even as a young person just getting saved, there was a lot of rejection. I, I, I mean, like I said, the guy that laid hands on me and got me saved is on the chat here. And he was my youth pastor at that time. And uh, he knows the rejection that I, that I got and still getting from that actual church, which is a mega church in our city right now. And they hate everything. With, he's not there anymore, but they hate the anointing. They hate anything with flowing and everything. I mean, they hate uh, everything that has to do with the anointing. And uh, we got saved in that church and we were flowing in the anointing because we got that from our personal relationship. But uh, I was receiving so much rejection at that time. Um, and I remember just spending nights alone with God, uh, continually alone with God. Now, rejection was a spirit that was on me. It was a spirit that I had to mm -hmm. deal with. But it forced me also to really spend time in the secret place. Um, uh, uh, I want to ask you this, Daniel. You know, with holiness and legalism and on this subject, what is your and stance, and I, I know we, me and you know our, our stance on this and strongly, and just for people in the chat, is um, uh, what is your, um, uh, can Christians have a demon? And why do you think those who are here listening now must really take deliverance more serious after they are saved than before they are saved? I will tell you this, just from statistics and, <laughs> and, and preaching all over the world, all the way as far as Africa, uh, on the east, on the uh, west, no, east side of Africa, in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, all the way over that way, from California to there is how far I've ministered through Europe. Christians can 100% have a demon if they want to. You can have as many demons as you want. You can eat them like Cheerios. Demons love to inhabit the house, the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions. You know, when I, I tell it like this, uh, Prophet Leon, and you can be by all means correct me if you don't think I'm right on this. No problem. When I bought, like, I just bought a house, right? So I just bought a house, and when you buy the house, it's yours. You sign on the lien. You, yeah. it's yours. The house is there, so you've signed the paper. So there's the house. It's yours, but you haven't, you haven't went into the house and really did anything. So yes. you buy that house and now you go into the house and you see things in the house that you don't want to be there, that should not be there. That doesn't mean the house does not belong to me. So I tell people all the time, I say, Jesus bought you at the cross of Calvary. Your, your, blood bought, your blood bought. So he owns you. How much you want to be sanctified is on you. How much you want to let him into those, those, those trauma areas, those places that you've tried to hide and, yes. and all that stuff is up to you. And that's, that's where the squatters come in. I, that's the demons, right? 
They've been squatting. They've been living illegally in your life. They say they have legal rights, but if you're covered under the blood and your blood blot, they're there illegally. They'll try to make you think they belong there, but yeah. they don't. That's why. That's why when the light is shined on the squatter, you you, you pull them out. And it, think of this: if you bought a house and there's some something in there that's sitting there that that's been there for a long time, maybe through the different owners, the owners have never lit that out. Generational stuff, yes. right? Yes. Familiar, familiar, fam- family spirits that have been passed down. And all of a sudden, you open the cellar and you shine the light. What is that person going to do when you shine the light on them? They're going to scream. They're going to yell. They're going to tell you how long they've been there, why they have a right here. And they're going to give you all the lies of why they should be there. And if you really think about deliverance, we see Christians who raise their hands, worship the Lord, speak in tongues, all that stuff, do, do healing services, do deliverance services even, and you sit with them and they're manifesting a demon. And, and, and why is that? It's because there's areas of their life they haven't been humble in, they haven't been transparent, or either there just hasn't been any revelation up to that moment. Yes. You know? Yes. yes. So, so, so Jesus buys us, you know, at the cross of Calvary, and we got to allow the light of the Lord to shine in our life. I mean, even up to this moment at 34 years old, prophet, I'm like you. What do you see? What needs to go? Yes. What areas What areas of my life? If there's something hiding in my life, like King David said, and I think it's in Psalms 51, uh, I think it is. Yes. He said, no, yes. it is. Search my, it is. Search my heart. No. Is that it? No. I, I might uh, be wrong. Sorry, but anyway, he's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, search, yeah, yeah. Search it's my another heart. song. Yeah. Yeah. Search my heart, Lord. Show me my, show me my anxiety. Show me the things that are holding me back. When you say prayers like that, that's when the demonic stuff in your life becomes exposed. Yes. You know, the anointing. If we even talk about the anointing, you can operate. Now, this is what's scary about the anointing that a lot of Christians don't know. <laughs> if you if you have demonic bondage in your life and you're a Christian and you're moving in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you'll be on stage. You'll move mightily. The people will love you. You'll step off stage and you'll become become so a- a- anti everything you've just preached because the anointing is also staring everything you've been hiding in your life it mm. starts to come it co- starts to come to the surface so i believe christians can have demons that's the best analogy that i have right now um some people will be like how can the holy ghost live in a christian and how can they have a demon well you got your body you got the inner court the outer court and the holy of holies yeah. jesus lives in the holy of holies the but enemies like to mess yeah, yeah they 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 want to live in the body and the soul of people and you let them in if you go to now if you're a christian you're speaking in tongues you love jesus you're baptized in the holy ghost you go watch pornography and you sit there for six hours watching it. Within that six hours of time, a demon's jumped inside of your eyeballs. Yes. I can guarantee I can guarantee it. Now your life starts going to hell literally. Now you have to go and find if you're in South yes. Africa, you go to Prophet Leon. If you're in America, you got plenty of places you can choose, right? So you you come up and you get set free. You get set free and you move on. Amen. That's why deliverance is there. But I, that's my opinion. That's my stance on what I've seen and what I've experienced. And I and I'm sure your um your st- like you said statistically, you would say that more than ninety percent of your deliverances has been on believers. Oh, definitely more than ninety percent for sure, for sure. You know, so we can argue scripture. And you listen, you can twist and scripture the way we want to. We can twist the scripture anyway according to our belief system and our denominational yes, yes. upbringing and etc. But uh, you know, experience when you couple experience with scripture, and actually how doctrine was written was they would take this this a concept. I'm not I'm not I'm not a I'm not a theologian, but uh, there's a formula on how doctrine was set into the church. They and also new dispensational moves. For example, let's take um, let's take the breaking out of the joy of the Lord or tongues, even tongues. When that dispensation brought tongues back in, they would not only look at just the scripture, they would look at the experience and scripture. I think it was, maybe David, you can help me. In the early church, who went and, they went and took the, sorry? Went and took the hands of, uh, they shook the hands of, um, it was James or Peter who went and got to the hand of fellowship. and But they were speaking about the move of God that was taking place was Paul. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, it was Peter. Sorry, I, I, and I'm putting this off the bat. I'm, I'm a theologian, you know, but uh, I'm very forgetful. But when Peter got the revelation on the Gentiles that that got that salvation is coming to them, when he got the vision that God said you can eat anything, he took that. Mm-hmm. And they would take it and say, okay, but this is the revelation I got. But they would also then see, he would also have to convince the apostles about Mm. the Holy Ghost fall or the Holy Spirit falling on the Gentiles. And he would say, but listen, this is what is happening. We see the Gentiles receiving the Holy Spirit, getting saved, speaking in other tongues in Acts 10. Uh, You know, they would take that. 
with the vision that and the experience that he had. Uh, so, and that's how doctrine has been put in. You know, you can't just mm. go on scripture and say, "But well, this is what the Bible says." No, your interpretation is wrong. You take experience yes. plus scripture. And I'm not saying we're making this a doctrine, but um, uh, 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 you know, we see Jesus casting out demons in the temple. We see uh, we see Jesus doing giving deliverance to the Gentile uh, woman, the Syrophoenician lady's daughter, but he says these words, he says, listen, this deliverance is actually not for you, it's for the lost sheep of Israel, you know, and he said it is their daily bread, and uh, you know, Paul says, uh, give no place to the devil, and we see how mm -hmm. actually you know that place is rooms in you, you know, you have a house, you have a temple, and uh, when demons can come in, a lot of people think, but you know, I just have this one part of me, and if this can only be a Holy Spirit there, and a no, you know, you have different rooms, different things that are hidden away in fact when it gets to the spirit world uh it is so creative of how the yeah. concept of your house can be uh, mm -hmm. uh you know and where demons can hide and i mean over 90 percent of of um of uh deliverances we have done has been on christians and has been in churches uh you know yeah. it has been on christians and has been interest i see so many people uh writing comments here and i want to see if people disagree i don't um I don't see anybody disagreeing at this moment, which is not fun, but usually we get attacks you, and so on. Yeah. You know what's crazy too, Prophet? This just came to me. You know, all these pastors that are falling into immorality, most of these people held the doctrine that Christians can't have demons. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's true. That is very true. Um, now, not all, of but a majority of them. Yeah, yeah, and some of them, some of them are critical. So I see, yeah. you know, usually those guys that do call out ministries and exposing ministries and etc. Mm -hmm. You know, legalistic. They would literally yes. fall in with the with the same things they are calling others out, and then yep. the deliverance thing. I mean, these guys are not falling. Those are the ones that are not believing in deliverance. Um, one of the big guys that fell now uh, recently, and I'm not going to mention the names. Um, uh, has just reached out, you know, has reached out to 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 one of my uh, uh, prophet friends, and um, it's it's a, it's a very powerful thing that is happening. But um, uh, you know, it's a very big guy, and um, uh, I think you know. I remember when I did deliverance, we would see. I, I remember <laughs> youth pastors. I mean, the devil would begin when we begin. To, I would just be praying and preaching and praying, and you would see youth pastors standing in the back. And demons screaming out of them. I mean, they would growl like lions, you know. And uh, wow. and uh, I remember taking this one person, my wife, nobody. I was ministering this one. It was like a camp, a big camp, and nobody. There were so many youth pastors there. Not one of them could do deliverance. Demons began to manifest in them, and it was only my wife and I that could do deliverance. And would carry this person out, and will do deliverance on him. It was, and you know, eventually it was a pastor, and he said to me how he got into pornography, and his problem was pornography. And I mean, this demon crowd <laughs> you know was screaming and he brought his youth group there that was many years ago i mean i was so young wow. i was so radical i didn't know what was happening really but uh, you know we're just going full out i think i was like 26 or 25 um and in south africa it was very rare at that time these things were very uh taboo you know in in the church um but uh, uh i see so many people i just want to read uh, i see a questions here um uh People are so about 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 uh, churches not believing in it, which they are in. I saw somebody was asking something about strongholds, but I think somebody did answer them. Um, I want to ask, uh, especially when we're on this thing, just before we begin to minister to the people, um, just your, if you can explain to people in your experience, because I feel, and this has been my um, experience, that people minimize the word strongholds. And mm -hmm. they say that strongholds is mentally, and then you can be demonized. And they don't understand the concept of a demon being behind a strong man, a stronghold. Yeah. You know, um, what is your explanation on or your experience on doing deliverance with strongholds? And then uh, coupled with what is the most common demo de demonic force or demon that you have dealt with that you feel is common amongst Christians? Because I know you have got a lot of experience with, with deliverance. Sure. Yeah, the word strong. I mean, if we think of what a stronghold is and how it's built up, it's stronghold isn't built up overnight. It's built up over time. So like when a stronghold comes in, it, it has to have its first brick, its first foundation laid, right? So we talk pornography, right? We talk about that often. Yes. Pornography starts with lust. Okay, so there's your foundational laying of the of the of the 
the stronghold. So lust is the foundation that's being laid. So now that that foundation has been laid, here come some other things behind it to help build the rest of that foundation. So now this thing's laid the foundation and goes, hey, look, guys, we've gotten the opportunity to now come and build on top of this because we wonder how more than one demon can be there. So now you got this whole family coming in because you just continue to give them more more stones to build on, more mortar, more more brick and mortar, whatever they're using to build it, and the nice glue and all that stuff to build uh, the concrete to build up this stronghold. Yeah. So here, here comes the foundation and here comes all his buddies and they build this stronghold and then they go and live inside of this stronghold, right? So the stronghold is built up by the sin, by the, by the letting in. And the way you break down the stronghold is you have to get to the foundation level of how that strong, because when you remove the foundation, the rest of the, the stronghold just falls. If not, you're going to be just chipping off things for the stronghold to come down, right? Come on. So that strong, that stronghold, if that stronghold is there, you're not going to have self-control. If you get angry, you can't stop yourself from getting angry. If you can't, whatever emotion is attached, that emotion is out of your control now because there is a stronghold built up in that area. And that's when deliverers have to come down to break the stronghold down. So you have the stronghold plus the demons that live within the stronghold. Um, and and here's, here's the thing is the demons you see, you asked me what's what's the most common demons that i've been running into well we all know one that is very common in this day and age she's everywhere i run into jezebel, jezebel. i actually I, in early in my ministry i ran into her a lot i'm not running into her quite as much now i go i go in seasons to what i run into it's funny yes. it's like it's like how with the city there's a principality wherever yep. i go i notice that there's different types of demons that i go if i go into india or sri lanka i used to preach in a sri lankan church they had a bunch of hindu demons that would show up you know vishnu and, and all them and shiva they, they would they would show up you know death shiva is the death demon you know yes. she, she's coming up and she, her foundation is murder death and all that so anyway the demons i've ran into lately i've actually ran into a lot of new age stuff python Yes. I've ran into that. Py I've ran into that. Pythos is what it's in the Greek. Yeah. yeah, that I've ran into that. That false spirit is probably one of the in the city. Yeah, and now let's not to get political, but I'm going to say some things that maybe you guys understand. When I go into democratic strongholds, I'm going to just Come say on. it. Go ahead, in Amer <laughs> in America, they call Republican strongholds, Democratic conservative yes. strongholds, liberal strongholds, and they use the word stronghold, which is really funny. So sure. uh, when I go into a democratic stronghold, I'm noticing I'm dealing with more of the 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 pronouns and the I'm I'm fighting being a woman or a man or the children yes. are confused. Suicide and depression is heavy in these places. So like recently I've been running into that Python New Age suicide and depression. These kids are putting on things and the the games that are coming out now as you guys see that all this stuff is bringing them into a false reality and these spirits are leading them into depression because they come out of this false reality. And they can't live it in real life, so they want to get back in that reality until eventually they go, I'll never be able, the enemy gives them this candy to eat on that they can never fulfill themselves. And then eventually they go, well, maybe if I kill myself, I can actually be in the reality that I want to be in. And that's what's going through their head. That's literally what's going through their head. I can kill myself and live this fantasy world. That's their heaven in their mind, right? That's the deception. So these are what these, are, so. Yeah, and that's where the deception is. With these young people today, as they, they play these games, they see these things, and they get this lying spirit that tells them if you kill yourself, you get to go to this fantasy world, or the enemy will offer them things. Like they had this rapper, I don't know if you remember in America, XXX Tenation, remember? He died yes. young. Yes, yes. He, he sold his soul. So now what's becoming popular is fame, right? So quick fame. We talked about TikTok and everything, yes. giving quick fame. And what these kids are doing is they're selling their soul for moments of fame. And you Come can't on. really sell your soul. You can't really sell your soul. They can drag you to hell, though. Yes. And they're losing their lives young. So I'm seeing this a lot in America. I'm seeing addiction very strong. I'm running into a very strong fentanyl. There's this thing called fentanyl over here. These people are very much addicted to that. So Jezebel, I run into her. Uh, Leviathan, I actually see him a lot in people too. Leviathan, Jezebel, and Python are three are three, three of the strongest. The trio. Yeah. The, they're the trio, the deadly trio. They're the three that I've been running into the most. And when I say the strongest, they're the heads. There are a lot of the heads of, yes. of the people. Now, I could tell you, yes, there's spirits of anger and rage and murder and lust. There's the little demons and and then there's, but if you want to talk the overall owner of all them, I run into those three. I run into those three. Now, some of them might come up to you and say, I'm the spirit of Joe, 
or I'm the spirit of I'm the spirit of alcoholism or I'm the spirit of Coors Light. You know, that's how they work. They yes, they just yes. There's look in Hinduism there's millions of demons. They can have all kinds of names. Our goal is to find out what the do, do, dominating the attribute is there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and who who is that prince demon in that person? We're going to pull you out. Now, this is what's really cool that people don't understand. This is why seeking the Lord and becoming strong in the Lord is important. You know, as you seek the Lord, you get measure greater measures of faith. Yeah. You get great you get greater authority on your life. So when you want to get a stronghold out, if you're operating, it's like when the disciples were trying to cast the demon out of that boy, Jesus comes up and say, oh, you people of little belief, come here, bring them to me and I'll cast them out. The truth is this, and not, not a lot of people like this uh, prophet Leon, and you can correct me too if you think different. There is people that operate in greater measures of faith. There's people that operate in greater authority that get the job done quicker sometimes. It's just the truth. It's the truth. But, but still, even with that, there is at times you run into individuals, you're going to be in deliverance for hours, but there is moments where you have that you've had it yourself. I know you have where the person just gets really dramatically hit. Yes. They're yeah. so hungry for freedom and it just leaves, yes. you know, they've, and usually they've been processed up to that point. If yes. you talk to them, yes. their desperation and hunger for freedom is out of this world, yes. you know? Yes. So that, that, that's that when I'm explaining strongholds, I guess, and and what demons I've run into the most that that's that's some of the information I got today. You know that might change though in a few months from now when you tell me what demons am I encountering a lot. <laughs> and know? it's true what they you're saying. It's true what you're yeah. saying with the different graces, different measures. You know, look, we have a you know we have a measure of faith that is uh, relevant to the depth of the encounter and revelation that we have personally. Uh, that we get from God. So, you know, spending time with Him is so crucial because that's where your faith is made. Your faith is increased. And then there's people with different graces, different gifts. So, for example, I mean, yeah. in your life, predominantly the gift is deliverance right now. You know, that's where God is using you. It's predominantly, and and you might be used more than somebody else in this. Yes, everybody can do deliverance, but yes, it's just, yes. it is... It is just that God has graced you with a stronger one than that. We see that even in... in, uh, in uh, 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 scripture we see that there um you see a predominant grace on somebody's life in certain areas it's a measure of grace and uh mm -hmm. you know with uh, i think the whole liberal spirit and the uh you know which obviously liberal falls more under your democratic side and i'm not a u.s citizen so i can't get hit now right now but um yeah. uh you know we kind of like know a lot of that of what's you know for, even from this side but what i see and i see it a lot on the west coast is a not a recognition of different graces. Um, wow. Uh, it's like this lackadaisical hippie type spirit, you know, um, where it's, uh, you know, it's, and I know there was even some church movements and then so on, and they, and they don't recognize authority in any way. And I remember uh, ministering on this side in churches that don't recognize different graces or even authority. The Holy Spirit isn't, it's, you know, it's like, uh, it's uh, scripture is so clear in Matthew 18. It says that our authority to bind demons comes from church discipline and church discipline, wow. understanding graces and measures and mm -hmm. having certain apostolic protocols put into place, you know, and mm -hmm. I think when the apostolic and the prophetic is missing, you have this authority to cast out demons that is missing. That is in exactly. my opinion of, of experience. You're right. You're right. So, uh, you know, apostles is the carrier of revelations. Um, mm -hmm. uh, prophets, I don't believe a prophet can be a prophet without having the ability to cast out a demon. Uh, I exactly. think those things really goes, goes hand in hand. And, uh, you know, uh, I wanted to ask you uh, this question. And, uh, you know, as we're talking about it, uh, some people are asking, I see people saying they need ministry for deliverance and they need... Uh, uh, a, a lot of people saying they have things moving in their ears, in their eyes, in their chest. Um, they have, uh, 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 you know, and we're going to minister deliverance to you right now, guys. You know, I have this thing. I said it to, I see Pastor Bladis and I said it to him. Uh, I think it was when we did a deliverance conference together. I said, you know, I think that there's going to be, or we're going to begin to do deliverance on technology, on people's mm -hmm. having a spirit of technology because of being so addicted to their phones uh, mm -hmm. you know, and how it affects people's social ability. But um, I want to, just before we, I want us to close off on this is, um, uh, uh, you know, before we get into ministering to people, now guys, I want you to start, and eventually when you're going to begin to, eventually when we're going to begin to minister to you, deliverance, when we're going to begin to minister to you, as the Holy Spirit leads in any area, uh, Tag people, share it for those who need it. And when we're going to begin to minister deliverance, 
attack your minister, your leader. Um, this is not, and I want to clarify this. I feel, I know they're watching. I know there's many ministers that follow uh, follows our ministry and there's many mainstream leaders that follows our ministry. You know, this is a taboo subject where the enemy wants to make you feel embarrassed to get delivered. And this is something that South Africa has to get over and uh, understand that you can either hold on to your reputation um, or you can be free, you know, and um, you can either hold on to your demon or lose your reputation. And uh, it is, it is, you know, it is either one of those two, but it is have to lose your reputation. When it comes to deliverance, you cannot mm -hmm. think of your reputation. Um, I want to ask nope. you just this, this question, uh, because your ministry is exploding, and I know there's many watching. Let us know in the comment sections right now with a fire emoji. How many of you believe your call to ministry? You know, because this is what I find interesting. I find so many people now being called to ministry more than what it was 10 or 15 years ago. And that is because of the acceleration of the move of God, you know, and mm -hmm. how God is speeding things up. And listen, uh, you know, it is not easy to where we have gotten now. But um, Daniel, what is the biggest key in being used by God? And what you would say from where God has taken you from failing in your eyes that was like failing and you messed up, you know, yeah. which is different to the testimony of just, oh, I had an encounter with God and God suddenly used me and uh, to a place of where you see the sudden, just the hand of God on your life right now. Uh, it's really, you know, first Corinthians 13 sums that up. I think it's 13. That's the love. That's the love chapter. Yeah. Um, sums it up really well. Um, I think the biggest sustainer, I could tell you, praying in the secret place for hours. I could tell you reading the word for hours. I could, I could say the common, the common answer by most people that if you, Oh, you got to pray a lot. You got to do this. The thing that has sustained me is being madly. Now, listen, now I'm telling you, this is good. I'm talking guys madly over your head, over the hills, over your head in love with Jesus. You have to love him more than anything he he has to be it that's it not your fame and ministry not your husband not your wife not your kids not your dog who you probably love more than human beings mm -hmm. you have to love jesus over everything and here's the thing it isn't really a have to it's a want to i want to love him you receive his love daily daily you wake up and you say good morning holy spirit thank you for the love of christ in my life that compels me that moves me that makes me do the things that i do that lets me move in compassion that allows me to help people that allows me to move in the miraculous thank you for that love because without this love you have nothing you have nothing everything is pointless it's 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 filthy rags it's it's no good even even moving there's prophets that can prophesy your mail mailing address oh, your man. phone number there's people out here that can do some even stronger deliverances than me or Prophet Leon or, any, or these other people you see. Knock more people out in the crowd than Benny Hinn, and they have filthy, disgusting backdoor lives. Let me tell you something. Don't get enamored by that. Get enamored when you see a man or woman of God who is yes. madly, madly in love with Jesus Christ because that is the sustainment. Being a person who has fallen in life and in ministry and disappointed many people and lost family at one time, let me tell you something. The only thing that's sustaining me to this day is I know that I'm madly in love with Jesus Christ. And I know that outside of that, everything is worthless. It's, as, as, as Solomon said, it is all vanity. It is all worthless. Everything outside of the love of God is vanity. It's going to lead you to bad places. So the thing that sustains me, prophet, is love. love. The love of God. Uh, the agape love of the Father. And I'm not talking perverted love. I'm not oh, talking love that I use. Not the love that I think. I'm not using the the new age love term. No, I'm, I'm talking true love that makes me love holiness that makes me love righteousness th that type of love the yes. love that that just compels my heart to to do what jesus did i need that love to be sustained and wow. i get that i get that from spending time with him from reading the word and enjoying it the whole way while i'm in love yes and you know this is again is something that and listen uh, because of time you know uh we, we can really get deep into the subject but um uh that's something that has to be caught and uh you know it's something it's not just going to happen you have to press in for it you know you have to pursue your wife before um before you get her you know before you or let's say a girlfriend yes. I mean, you 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 pursue and uh yes jesus pursued us but scripture says draw near to draw close to god and he will draw close to you there has to be a pursuit 
from our side. Uh, I call it a holy hunger. You know, um, uh, 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 Jesus said, the Bible says that Jesus was walking with the disciples on the road of Emmaus, and uh, uh, he was passing the city acting as if it was going further and they were going into the city and obviously they didn't know it was him he was it was after his resurrection and their eyes was restrained from knowing it was the lord but he acted as if he was going further the scripture says a scripture says and then it says they pulled they grabbed a hold of him and they pulled him into the city to say abide with us one night and the word there the bible says they constrained him the word constrained means to violently passionately aggressively pull something towards you and you know we have to be like that with his presence to fall in love with him yeah. violently passionately aggressively fall in love with his presence to grab his presence into our lives it's not about the power guys it's about his presence his mm. presence comes when you're in love with him his power comes because you have a gift I'm going to say it again. His presence comes when you're in love with him. When somebody preaches, you can feel if there's a backing or a witness of the spirit mm -hmm. that is behind them or if there's not. And if it is not there, it means the presence is missing. And there's not there's, there's something that is missing. There can be power. There can be a gift flowing. But the presence is missing. Mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. I preach a lot on it because the presence is Jesus, the person himself. And he Come comes, on. you cannot fake that. You can fake a gift. You can fake those things. You can fake healing. People can fake deliverance. Come to, come to Africa and South Africa. Yeah. You'll see <laughs> deliverances. Okay, you'll see actors. You'll see all those things. I mean, it's been exposed here in mega churches from actors in wheelchairs to actors in prophecy to actors. And I mean, if I knew all those tricks, you know, uh, we could have, I could be world known right now. You yeah. know, if I know the tricks that some of these guys are pulling off. Facebook prophets, listen, we can get all your details and prophesy every specific detail and clarity. Mm -hmm. I've been through this world, you know, but, and, and those things don't impress me. Somebody putting out an address, it really doesn't. I've seen the sharpest prophets prophesy. I've been with them. The thing that impresses me is somebody who carries glory. Come um, on. You know, and you were speaking about our character that has to be shaped. I, I, a, a, a powerful man of God said to me these words about two years ago. They said, Leon, you're going through the persecution, because I went through crazy persecution. And they said, you're mm. going through the persecution you're going through so that God can stretch your character for the mm. grace that you must carry in the dimension that is coming, you know. And uh, when you die to yourself, platforms and pulpits do not no. matter to you. You know, I was invited this year. I was invited to quite a few conferences and, uh, and there was one of them that was very big here. It was with one of my favorite ministers in one of my favorite ministers in the world that I wanted to meet. And, uh, they asked me to be one of the main speakers. And I said, yes, to the person. I'm like, yeah, man, I'll be, you know, it's a 5,000 cities. I'm like, I'll be there. And I said, and it was the night. And I answered, I said, yes, the morning. Uh, there was two, they invited me twice. And uh, uh, the one was the night and uh, the Holy Spirit said to me, don't do it. And I canceled. And uh, then the second time, if the person phoned me again and asked me, it was about a month before, if I can do this conference. And I said, yeah, no, I'll, I'll do it. You know, and this is how God works with him because I'm just like, yes, I'll do it. And then I realized I didn't consult with God, Lord, you know, and, uh, and afterwards, uh, uh, this is, I mean, this is like one of my favorite preachers. And God said to me, I don't want you to go do it. I'm like, wow. you know, it's like my heart sank. And I was like, I wanted to meet this guy. And they said, but, you know, and I phoned the minister. I said, look, you know, I, I just can't do it. I said, I don't know what to say. I just, all I can say is I can't do it. I'm, I'm so sorry. I said, I'm going to attend, you know, but I can't do it. God is not allowing me to do it. Um, and, you know, but I can say that because we went through such character shaping and persecution that you're not off the pulpits. You're not off the after um i'm not after those things you know um i really just want god and i think when you get to that place i see so many people pulpit hunting competing get climbing the mm. corporate ministry ladder we have it in south africa climbing the corporate ministry ladder i mean they will kill anybody just to get to the top and it is quite wow. disgusting for me and that's why i you know when you kill die to your reputation it's because god wants to shape your character so you can carry the glory that uh, that he has for you the greater the death the greater the call uh, Come on. Pullman said she died a thousand times you know in the spot <laughs> that she was standing before she got onto the stage the greater the death the greater the call the greater the persecution the greater the call so it doesn't matter what you're going through right now and we, I want us to get into ministry and uh, Daniel I want us to pray for the guys on here but just before I get into that guys I want to ask you um, uh, uh, 
I want to ask you for those who are watching and who are online right now, just before we get into ministry, I want to ask Daniel specifically, I felt a strong anointing when you spoke about impartation, when you spoke about what God is doing uh, in your ministry. And I'm going to get to that uh, just now, right after this, into as where people can find you and what God is doing in your ministry, especially also where they can find you in South Africa. But I felt an anointing when it comes to impartation. I mean, I'm receiving as I'm sitting with you. Uh, again, I said to, I said to, I think it was, I said to, I said to Apostle Greg and I said to Apostle uh, Pagani, uh, I said, man, you know, I'm going to the States uh, just also to, res- I'm going to receive so much, you know, and uh, I'm just like a sponge where uh, really, uh, I, you know, I haven't been, I mean, we've been in lockdown and we can't, couldn't get out and I'm not going to get into the dynamics of that, but South Africa is really on a lockdown and uh, they're squashing South Africa big time. And I'm just like, you know, I, I said to somebody, the reason I'm going to the States twice is because there's, in South Africa, there's no conference we can go sit in to receive an anointing. Us as ministers, mm. there's nothing. You know, uh, that's why I'm going to, uh, I'm going now, uh, before I'm coming to you guys, I'm going to another conference and um, uh, 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 with, with uh, just to receive, you know, that's with Pastor Rodney, just, but just to receive, I just want somewhere just to, where you can just receive the anointing because uh, we've reached, I don't want to say we reached the stage of pride. Now, you know, I, this is not pride. We haven't reached the stage, but uh, where do you go to, to receive? We go to all these conferences in South Africa and it's dead. I, I, I right. was invited to a conference the other day um, with our team, um, huge minister in South Africa, huge, 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 huge. And I just went to, you know, to sit and, and receive, and it was, with all due respect, um, uh, 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 a Marvel movie would have given me more um, <laughs> uh, uh, anointing than what I received there. And that is really, I say that with, with you know, uh, a heartache, because it shouldn't be like that in the body of Christ. And, um, uh, you know, so... I want us to pray for importation. I want you to pray for importation. But just before that, guys, anybody that is on here, we um, we uh, uh, this is also known as our kind of like our mid mid week service. This is a thing with our church where a lot of our churches on. So we take an offering up here. But I want to ask you: I don't get anybody on without honoring them. And uh, those who are expectant right now to say, you know, I, or let me say this: if you're grateful and thankful that you have received something while Daniel was talking, and I believe many did, the anointing was strong. I saw people saying they, they, you know, when you speak about deliverance, people's eyes goes open; they realize in areas that they need deliverance of. But if you feel you receive something, just before we get into ministry with you, I want you to sow a seed um, of thanksgiving. If you have, uh, if you, if you're going to receive something, I want you to sow a seed of expectation. Maybe it's your time to tithe. If you don't have a church, it's your tithing. If if you're tithing at Encounter Church, you can tithe right now. Uh, for those, just as a reminder that comes here, I know people usually forget, and many people forget, they have to be reminded, unfortunately. Uh, but we have great givers in Encounter. And uh, those who just feel they want to give an offering to say thank you, but uh, I want to give out of this to Daniel's ministry, to him, as a gift. We don't get anybody on here without honoring them, and I've never had anybody on my pulpit with honoring them greatly. I don't steal money or from people or honor them little bit. I've been to churches, they give you a Coke, you know, for to say thank Thank you for preaching there. And uh, it's not because we are after money, but uh, when I planted a church, I've been through itinerant ministry, I've been through revival, revivalists, and uh, I know what it is not to be received, and I know what it is to be received. I know how uh, the gifts flow out of my life once I'm received. So I know the key of honor, and I know everybody in Encounter understands and knows the key of honor. So I want to ask you right now to give a seat and let me know in the chat once you have given and uh, uh, and what you are expecting, just say hashtag what you are expecting. and But hashtag what you are expecting if you have given. Um, and then I'm just going to read it out. And I got your chat here in front of me. And I'm going to pray for you right now. I want to say thank you for those who are giving to this ministry. You can go to, you'll see that you've got Zapper here, Snap, or Zapper, Zapper. I don't know, if, I think that is in the States sometimes. But for those who are overseas, international, you can go to our website, leondepria.com. Or you can go to encounterchurch.co.za. Both websites, if you scroll down, you'll see the giving options eventually. Uh, you'll see PayPal. You'll see uh, donor box, uh, cash app, Ven- not Venmo, uh, cash app, PayPal. For South Africa, you'll see pay fast on there. You'll see our banking details for those who are South Africa who want to do uh, EFT, electronic transfer. Uh, everything, guys, is below. You've got two ministries. You've got Prophetic Encounter and Encounter Church. Um, that is simply because both of those accounts work together for what we're doing right now. We're raising funds 
uh, in this church to, to, to build the church, to build our buildings where we are right now. And that is, that is 85 million rand for the first building, uh, equivalent to dollars, that's about $6, 000, $6 million. Uh, that's just our first building. And obviously, we got three that we have to build. But um, we're raising that fund in South Africa. We, don't, we can't get any mortgages, bonds, or anything like that. And for those who are in South Africa, knows it in churches that banks don't finance it. So we have to do everything cash. But apart from that, so that's just why we take it up into these accounts. But I'm going to be honoring Daniel and uh, blessing him out of that. And your seat will be going to, towards that also in part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I forgot about that, guys. You can send Facebook stars. That goes 100% into our USA account. Uh, so you can do that. Please do not give super chats. Um, that is just uh, because I don't want YouTube to take a 30% cut. But if you're ready to give right now, I want to pray for you right now. And uh, let me know if you have given, guys. I see a lot of people here saying uh, with hashtag, I'm going to check it right now. But Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, that the anointing will be upon those who have given. Or those who are giving, who are going to give right now. Let the expectations be met. Let it be a photograph of their faith. They cannot buy a miracle, but we understand the concept of honor. I pray right now that your hand will be upon them, that the finger of God will be upon them, that you'll give them importation, that you'll raise many up in ministry that is watching right now. Those who are saying that they reject or they've given up or they feel like they cannot go on, they've got this call of God on their lives, but it's like they cannot pursue it or they're battling or they feel like God has given up on them or they've messed up too much. Let this moment right now lift any form of condemnation from their lives. And I pray that as Daniel begins to minister, as myself begins to minister, that those who are giving, that they'll receive from him greatly because of the act of giving. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Uh, and I want to thank Amen. you guys. I'm not going to leave the giving on uh, simply because people really get offended. They come on and they just see the giving and then they think all we are are into giving. And, and they don't even know that we've done everything uh, that we've done before. So I'm not going to leave it on uh, for long, guys. Please take a... Um, please take a... Uh, Please take a, um, let me just get the thing to take it off. Please take a screenshot, turn your phone sideways, take a screenshot. You'll have all the details on. I see people are, um, let me just check the comments here. Uh, I see people saying sewing, sewing. Thank you so much, guys. People saying receiving deliverance, breakthrough, given. Thank you so much, Lori. Appreciate it so much. And uh, 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 Dan, thank you so much, Jade Hayes. Uh, he can, importation. Thank you so much, guys. Importation, financial breakthrough. And we're going to pray. Listen, as you make that hashtag, let it be a note. Let it be an expectation, something you're expecting, God. A farmer does not sow a seed without expecting a harvest, okay? So a lot of people do fake humility and say, I give to the Lord and not expecting anything back. No, 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 no. no. There's a realm where you can't expect back. And mm -hmm. God has declared in the scripture, importation, importation, deliverance. People are saying, thank you so much. And may it be so. Brandon from all saying deliverance. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. People saying sowing. Irene Nettis, thank you so much. May God bless you. Uh, sown, importation. Candice is saying, Importation, thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much, guys. Importation, importation. Sewing, done financial breakthrough. Stephen Dioche is saying, thank you so much, Stephen. Uh, uh, we receive it, seeds sewn. Thank you, Carl. Carl and Tonya. Uh, you know, uh, Daniel, just a testimony. This guy, Carl, that just sewed now, his wife, Tonya. Uh, before I knew who he was, she didn't know him. I prophesied to her and I said, I see a divine partnership with somebody called Carl. And uh, wow. she met him six months later and got married. <laughs> wow, know, wow, wow, the wow, wow. We only realized after she got married that that was what I prophesied because it was at a thing where we were, I was writing prophecies down for everybody. So I was at a big uh, retreat and I was just taking papers and I was writing things down and I write uh, this name down and uh, only after they got married we realized that's what I written down you know so <laughs> they're, in our, they're in our church and um, this is uh, God did great miracles for her I mean she got blessed with cars and we have people in the house uh, in our church listen people saying all these people are taking up money 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 and nobody's listen do you if you come to our church you'll see the blessings of God we had I asked yeah. the one conference I said how many people received cars yeah. over 20 hands went up we have wow. houses that's been given listen the blessing you cannot deny and you can never out give God I see so many people saying sowed 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 importation giving uh Kevin C Williams that's my that's my pastor that's running in counter church in in the United States he said sown importation uh deliverance importation awesome guys sowing 
And listen, you, my crowd, if you're saying importation, I mean, in Ghana, people know that. Uh, we believe in importation, activation, honoring, uh, importation, importation. People are saying, Kone, uh, thank you so much, Ishri, thank you so much. Um, Idola is saying arthritis in a lower spine. That's what she really trusting God for. We're going to pray for deliverance, healing, and importation right now, guys. Importation, importation, deliverance, God's presence. Awesome. Thank you for saying God's presence. Um, our ministry just became debt free, building and 21 acres of land. Kenneth W. Johnson, Jr. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. Kenneth, do you know Kenneth or not? Is he, is he from, from your side? You don't know? No. Not from your side. Uh, oh, that's amazing, Kenneth. May God bless you. That is amazing. That is awesome. Uh, 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 and I, you know, there's a lot of debt-free things God is going to do. I believe this is the month. I believe September is the month of debt cancellation. Uh, I prophesied it at the beginning of this year that God is going to do debt, uh, debt cancellation this month of September. We've seen debt cancellation. I think that's one of our most testimonies is debt cancellation and financial breakthrough on people's lives. Thank you so much, guys. A lot of people are still sewing. I'm going to take the things off. Take a screenshot of this giving details. I don't want to take too long of that, but thank you so much. And uh, uh, we're going to be blessing Daniel also with this um, because as I said, we I want to partake of this gift. But Daniel, uh, before we go on, there's two things I want to mention is first of all, obviously we have the Forerunners Conference coming up. And uh, yes. uh, let me just get it here. Um, uh, and this is an incredible thing that you are running. Maybe if you can just tell people about that. I'm going to put up the 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 the, um, the flyer, you know, while you're talking. I'm going to put it on and off and so on. But maybe you can just tell people what to expect or what is coming up. Yeah, this, is, this has become way bigger than what I even expected. So it's the first annual. So we're going to plan on doing this every year. But this is the first annual TSNL Forerunner Conference. And if you don't haven't noticed, it is very deliverance focused. It is everybody on this flyer right here has come from wild backgrounds, and they are some of the forerunners yes. actually in deliverance ministry right now. Actually, all of them on here, we are the we are pioneering deliverance. I mean, we are we're pioneering it. So I brought all these pioneers in, and um, it, it was just starting out with Isaiah and John Ramirez, and it blew up to this right here. So. <sighs> God's God's hand is in this, even with prophet. Lee. I just asked. That's how I know this is. You know how hard it is to get all these people yeah, on one yeah, platform. Yeah. This is so unusual, and that means there is a statement being made at this conference, and people are going to be flying in from all over the world. We're uh, we're we're creeping towards almost two thousand registrations. Oh we still got a little ways to go. Uh, max capacity, guys, is up to I think forty five hundred five thousand people can fit in this 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 building. We're we're expecting it to max out. So um, I want to also tell you the evening sessions are free, but I want to tell you this. I only do that because we always want to have the free option, but I would so say register because there's more speakers that are that actually are known. Some of them are well, well-known well TikTok. Some of them are pastors or churches that are very good friends of mine. They're going to be speaking also in the day sessions. So I would definitely tell you to go to the supernaturallife.org and register for the event. And uh, yes. you're going to be ble- you're going to be blessed tremendously. But regardless, get out there, make it. You'll get in. I promise you. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And you're going to. You th- we're talking about we're talking about impartation right here. My goodness, this is going to be a place of so much impartation. So, you know, just come on out and receive, receive from the Lord, man. If deliverance don't happen in this conference, if you don't get delivered here, I don't know where you can go. I mean, I'm just being honest. No. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know where you're going to go. You know, if you so, were seeking deliverance, because not only are the speakers doing there, but all this is all the forerunners. So yeah. all the forerunners who are trained through the ministry to do deliverance that have been coming to revivals with me and actually did handle on deliverance and take over the deliverance sessions, they're going to be here. So in, anything can happen: healing, deliverance, prophecy, uh, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. Everything's going to be there. Uh, discerning of spirit, all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is going to be in operation. We also have, if you look up here, we have fivefold up here. So we oh, got we got a, we on. got five fivefold ministry right here. We come have on. people with app, we have apostles, prophets, pastors, people, evangelists, people who have worship, evangelists, people who have planet churches each one of these guys have movements in the earth right now so i mean come on man what do you what else can i say jesus is going to be there but jesus will be glorified none of these people that are going to be on stage i'm going to tell you something they have to be in love with jesus come and on. every one of these people from what i know are madly in love with jesus christ and they give him all the glory and honor for everything and they're selfless too i mean tremendously selfless 
and humble. So I'm super excited to do life with these guys. I'm there to receive too, Prophet. <laughs> I'm expecting to get, I'm expecting to get something amazing from you, a word of the Lord from you, and and uh, just everybody there. I'm expected to just receive something from them that's going to bring breakthrough into my life come and on. my wife and my fa- and my family and ministry. Come on, come on. You know this is going to be something. I see so many people saying they're going, they're going flying in. I know there's people even from South Africa that is flying in. Um, you know, some of my guys are also coming. Uh, it is it is going to be it is going to be amazing. It is totally God um, God led. You know, as you said, to get all these people. I think I was speaking to Isaiah. He said to me, he doesn't think this is going to happen again. You know, um, uh, to this degree, you know, where you got all these speakers out at the same time. And uh, yeah. that is incredible. The second thing, and I can't wait to be there with you, but the second thing I wanted to ask you is, how can people get to know your ministry more? Uh, what, what, you know, when it comes to forerunners, those who are on different nations or so, how can they connect to you? Uh, my guys are yeah. going to put your website down in the comments for anybody that wants your website. Sure. And that, the thing is, the web- website is very self-explanatory. All social media links, everything uh, we have a map, a deliverance map, or just a map. You can get healing, anything with forerunners all on it on the website. But you can go to the supernaturallife.org, and that shows you how to become a forerunner, what has a forerunner look, being a forerunner looks like. And we have, remember, we have forerunners all over the world. We even have a strong presence in South Africa. We have a strong presence in Europe. We have a strong presence in America. And now we're starting to develop a so- strong uh, presence in South America. We even have a stronger presence in Canada. So this is starting to get all over the place. And uh, it's even getting into Asia some. So we have people all over the world. I even saw on here one of the forerunners from the Fiji Islands on here. So we got yeah. people from Fiji. We got people all over the world. So if you want to know how to get involved, just go to the supernaturallife.org and it shows you how you can do everything right on there. So. Sure. Let's listen. So, guys, I want you to go follow. I'm just reading the comments here. Uh, 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 somebody says, "As I pray, the dogs started watching the ceiling." Okay, uh, that's fun. But listen, I got, I got, uh, I got uh, Daniel's um, uh, uh, website down pinned below, guys, in the comment section. That is supernaturallife.org. Follow his ministry. Check him out on Facebook, on YouTube. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel, please. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just the, the anointing on your videos is incredible, Daniel. The deliverances that is taking place. And we had a bit of a signal drop just now. So I just wanted to apologize for that. There was a breakup on both my sides. It froze and the numbers dropped by 50 instantly. So uh, just check that. So sorry, I'm just speaking to my guys here. It's right now, but um, uh, I, I saw that happening earlier. Um, uh, so... What was I busy saying? Oh, yes. There's such an anointing on your videos, Daniel, that, um, you know, when you do deliverance and et cetera, and guys, I want to encourage you, follow his ministry. You know, you can receive importation through through video, through online. I mean, that's where I received yeah. a lot of importation was online in the beginning. Yeah. You don't get to meet generals when you're young in ministry and stuff like that. No. You, know, I, you sit in front of Benny Hinn, you sit in front of uh, TB Joshua, whoever it might be, and you receive importation online. And uh, yeah. so, and that's what we want to do right now with you, with everybody that is on here right now. Um, I'm going to ask Daniel to pray for importation for you. I don't want us to pray right now for deliverance or those things. I feel it's a bit too late, but we want to pray for importation. And in that prayer, there'll be a prayer for deliverance and God can do anything that you want right now. But for importation and activation, for those who are here who says they want to be used by God in the ministry for those who said they have ministries or they those who are saying that God has called them they're not in there yet but uh you know that hunger that holy hunger to come back what you're saying Daniel about passionately falling in love with Jesus I want that type of prayer of importation for people on here if you don't don't mind you know sure I'll do it right now okay guys as, as it says in the Bible Paul says I come to you to stir the gift that is inside of you and also to leave an impartation. So right now, go ahead and put yourself in a receiving posture. That can be your hands up, your hands open, whatever that is. And I'm going to pray, and I believe there's going to be a special impartation given to everybody watching. I believe deliverance is going to break out in your life. I believe breakthroughs are going to come. I believe the ministries that you guys have so long to, to be in, respectfully, is going to birth in your life because God wants to finish the work that He started in you. <clears throat> so Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for every viewer right now, put your hand towards the screen. Father, I thank you for every viewer. I ask right now, Lord, by your love, your grace and your mercy to let your power fall on every person. And as your power falls upon them, 
Let the gifts of the Holy Spirit stir. Let the fivefold ministry stir. Let first love be stirred on the inside of them. I pray right now, special grace upon your life. Yes. For what the for what the Lord has given you before the foundations of the world. He's given you this. So, Father, I thank you right now for stirring that in their life. Now receive by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Yes, receive by the Holy Ghost yes. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, God. get them. Amen. 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 Guys, if you receive, let us know. Listen, I'm going to pray also one more prayer just for importation. And uh, uh, well, both myself and Daniel will pray together. I've just, just reminded right now um, of people who are trusting God for deliverance, for healing. Amen. And I feel it is going to happen as we say this prayer. Um, Daniel, I want you to pray with you. I'm also going to, I'll start off praying and then you can pray. Sure. Just, this is prayer, corporate prayer for healing, deliverance. Sure. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now that the anointing and the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost will enter into the houses of those who are watching. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost rest upon them. Yes. Let every spirit that is bound, every spirit that has is, that is, that is allocated itself or lodged itself into their bodies, into their lives, those who need healing, those who need deliverance, I take authority over every curse, every spirit in the name of Come Jesus on. Christ. We take authority Every, every demonic spirit, we bind its power in the name of Jesus Christ. We loose it from their lives, yes. and I command it to loose them. I bind every spirit that has attached itself to them, whether through sickness, witchcraft, whatever it might be, generational curse. We command you to come up and come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to loose them and set them free. I pray for physical healing for those yes. who need healing right now. For even those who are right now needing deliverance, you will feel something lifting off you. You will feel air coming out of you. You'll feel coughing. Yes. You'll feel a manifestation. Listen, just let it go and let it release. Don't hold it back. Don't resist it. Just let it go. For right now, I sense the power of God is in your houses, wherever those are who are receiving. Those who sow the seed and say, I'm trusting God for this. May you receive it right now in Jesus' mighty name. May the presence of God saturate your life. May there be a fresh, holy hunger and on fire hunger come upon your life. May you be baptized with a fresh baptism in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to receive wherever you are right now. Daniel, I don't know if you can pray as you feel led also. Yes, and, and I, was, I was seen by the Spirit, uh, somebody cutting their wrists. I was seeing that very prominent, and I saw the, the name Tamara come across the, by the Spirit across. So if there's a Tamara watching, you've been, you've been cutting your wrist, you've been... You've been hurt because of what happened with you and a man, how he just put you to the side. I just pray right now that the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit, that delivering anointing also will come upon you and, and set you free. I even see your scars. I see the hands of Jesus going over your scars right now and just healing you and removing those scars right now in Jesus' name. I feel like the Lord is saying you will no longer be scarred by the past. You will no longer look and see that pain anymore. You will no longer look and see that cutting that was there, that, that spirit of sabotage that was on your life. He's removing that from your life so that you can move forward in your destiny and become a lover of him. You're meant to really go and bring a lot of, you have a, a spirit of gifts of helps on your life. You're meant to bring, you're, you're meant to have that type of ministry in your life to help others. And come the Lord is, I mean, the enemy has tried to come and sabotage that from you. So I pray right now that that grace of Jesus would come upon you. And also anybody else that's been suffering with that, 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 that death, spirit of death and that spirit of sabotage just yes. tried to come and destroy you and take you out. I command it by the mighty name of Jesus Christ to come off of you now and to never afflict you from this day forward or any of your children or anybody in your family. In Jesus' mighty name, be free. And Lord, I thank you also just for your, your precious healing anointing being upon each person here watching. May cancers be cursed from people's bodies. May lumps dissolve. May cataracts fall off eyes. May deaf ears open. May blind eyes open. May the scales come off of your eyes that have been blocking you from seeing in the spirit. May a greater impartation of that come upon your life. And may you be free for the glory of God. Every contrary spirit that's being coming against you, I command those contrary spirits to loose you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I also really quick, Prophet Leon, I heard from yes. by the Spirit, there's people watching from South yeah. Africa. You're, you've literally said these words, I'm trapped. I remove those word curses of you being trapped off of you right now. If you read the Bible, you'll see God made ways where there seemed to be none in yes. all of Israel. In the old covenant up to the new, he always made a way. You are no longer trapped, says the word of the Lord. You will not Come be on. a trapped 
person. You are a liberated, free person. And he's going to use people from South Africa to raise up in this hour. He's going to bring all fivefold ministers, just like in America, from South Africa to be sent out as far as the east is from the west, Come from on. the north to the south. There's ministers that will be raised up in South Africa, even by this pioneer right here, Prophet Leon. He will be uh, a host house of yes. many of these people yes. that will be raised up in South Africa. It will come from this man's house encounter and his churches. These revivalists will be birthed in this hour because it's needed for this end times movement. So, Father, I thank you for these people in South Africa and that curse that they spoke of being trapped and how the government had tried to hold them down. We remove those barriers now in the mighty name of Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. 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 Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much. The anointing was so strong right now. Um, guys, I want you to know, um, uh, again, the reminder of the of the Forerunner Conference that is coming up, and you can find all that information on, on Daniel's Facebook, on his website, and we're excited to see you there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know you enjoyed it tonight. The anointing was strong. I know people got set free. Let me know quickly. If you experience the presence of God or if you experience freedom, uh, something right now um, on your side, just let me know. Just say, I received it or I got delivered or I felt this leave me. Just in the comment section, just so that we can be encouraged and we can be seeing it from this side. And, uh, you know, we had incredible numbers. And I mean, we saw sitting on 1,500 people. Without we got quite a, a few different platforms. Plus, uh, I mean, we went, we were up mostly uh, over 2,000 people right, uh, right for the broadcast. And uh, I want to let people know, I mean, in South Africa, this is late at night, you know. Um, wow, uh, wow. Uh, uh, you know, so I choose to, to, to go that time. People are saying, let me just see it. People say, I receive very strong presence, powerful coughing. Uh, people saying, delivered freedom. That is so awesome. Awesome, guys. Uh, I felt God's spirit. Thank you, Prophet Leon Daniel. So powerful. Um, it received, I did. I received it. I mean, experienced the presence of God. Uh, I received impartation. Listen, impartation is taken by faith. It is not Come a on. feeling. It is not an emotional thing. It is taken by faith. And to go and act on it, you know, uh, 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 my family is loose. I saw somebody saying, I got two gay sons and a trans daughter. May God do, and they say they trust in God. I mean, that, that, that must be a fight. And may God do a miracle for you in your life, in your family's life, in Jesus' name. Uh, I see are people saying, on you guys, awesome guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, people. May you receive importation. Listen, I, our heart is, and Bill, I'll, I want to close off with this Bill Hammond prophesied, and he wrote books about it. He said the fivefold ministry is being restored from the, uh, from the pastor to the evangelist, to the teacher, to the prophets, the apostolic. And he said the last dispensational move would be the day of the saints, where wow. people, the body of Christ, would be doing it instead of a one-man show. And you would see people that are being raised up now are those who want to impart to others, want to raise up, you know, not those who are holding young ministers back and closing doors for them. And we're still experiencing that in South Africa. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, God is bringing in a new generation, a new dispensation. I see that in the United States where it is about importation. It is about wanting to send people out about, uh, you know, it is God's anointing. He's waiting for a new wine skins to pour out new wine where it is the day of the saints, meaning it is you that will be imparted to, that will do the work of the ministry. And uh, that I believe is God's heart and that's going to bring in the end time revival like never before. So thank you so much, guys. And uh, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on. It was an honor. I took too much of your time. Uh, no, you're fine. I had, I had a good time. Uh, I took too much of your time. And uh, uh, I'm so excited to be with you. Can't wait to be with you. And um, I'm just going to close off by playing just a video. And then I'm going to see you. So that'll be like uh, one minute for the guys. And then I'm going to see you in the chat thing directly afterwards. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. And we'll see you. We'll see you soon. God bless you.